you know it's this. Take a perk and talk it and see. Money swallowing like six. Did it perfect to the kid. Got a million who's sick on my head. Got a million better put on the road. I just win. I know we got a million dollars. The devil that's it and I chip it again. Hello and welcome back, fellow anime lovers, to Manga Muse. I am delighted to have you join us once again in the world of fanfiction and fantasy. This is the ninth part of What If Deku and Hero Academia Joins Power Rangers. Smash the like, share and subscribe button for more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss such great parts. Thanks for the introduction. Now let's dive into the world. Fairy Tale Universe, Tower of Heaven Night. A few minutes after the Rangers' arrival, inside the Tower of Heaven. In a dark room deep inside the Tower of Heaven, lights flashed sporadically followed by the pained screams of a single child. He was a blue-haired child and a red tattoo above and under his right eye. He was dressed in slave clothes. His name was Jello Fernandez, a 12-year-old boy. In the center of the room, Jello was chained to a single pillar across from a large jagged crystal. A purple magical seal hung over the boy, which sporadically shined at random intervals, severely electrocuting the child every time the seal lit up. Three cultists observed the situation as it unfolded, two of them, a fat man dressed in green robes holding a magic staff and a skinny man dressed in blue robes, were smiling at the boy's scream while the third one crossed his arms. This boy sure is strong-willed, the skinny cultist observed, chuckling darkly to himself as he watched the torture unfold before him. I wonder how long it'll take before he breaks, the fat cultist replied, grinning sadistically to himself as Jell panted heavily before screaming in agony as he was shocked again. Being a hero to that little girl and his friends surely isn't worth going through all this. He asked sarcastically, hoping that the kid wouldn't relent so they could continue the torture. The third cultist just exhaled in annoyance at the two's inane chatter. His eyes were focused on the blue-haired boy who was screaming in pain. This cultist was a giant of a man with an incredibly muscular body that towered over his two fellow cultists, the tallest one only reaching his waist in height. On his back were two double-edged battle axes resting in a large holder slung across his shoulder. Before he could order the two cultists to focus on their job, another cultist suddenly burst into the chamber and immediately collapsed onto the floor in exhaustion as his whole body was covered in various injuries. Let me guess, you idiots haven't taken care of the revolt yet have you? The large cultist asked, knowing exactly what the answer was going to be from the state of the soldier's attire. When he saw the soldier nod affirmatively, he wanted to slap his forehead in annoyance at what was happening. Okay, did you find out who is the ringleader of this little revolution? He asked exasperatedly. Why, yes, sir. The grunt cultist choked as he lifted himself from the ground, not wanting to get on the bad side of his superior. It's that red-haired girl that you tortured earlier. She's the one who riled up the slaves into taking up arms and now she's leading them against us. He reported causing the other two cultists in the room to turn their heads towards him as the boy's torture stopped abruptly, allowing the boy a chance to breathe. Urza, Jello muttered silently under his breath, going completely unnoticed by the cultists in the room as Skinny and Fatty began to beat on the cultist lying on the floor. Don't lie, you idiot. Skinny shouted as kicked the down cultist and stepped on the man's face. There's no way a little girl like her could actually lead this revolt after what we did to her. Yeah, Fatty agreed as he kicked the down man in his stomach. Dealer, here oversaw that girl's torture himself and even tore out her right eye for good measure. Fatty explained as he pointed towards the massive cultist before spitting on the down man. You are the one. Jello rasped out causing Giller, Fatty, and Skinny to turn their collective heads towards him. The boy soon raised his head. However, his eyes, instead of showing pain or fear after the near-endless torture he had gone through for the past few days, were full of murderous rage as he glared at the largest cultist in the chamber. You were the one that took Urza's eye. Jello roared in pure fury as he lunged forward trying to get at the man responsible for maiming his friend only to be stopped by the shackles that kept him tied to the pillar in the middle of the room. Not long after his outburst, the blue-haired boy was shocked by over a hundred volts of electricity causing him to scream out in agony at the sudden pain. Giller burst into laughter as he watched Jello scream in agony before falling onto his knees as the electrocution stopped. His laughter died down as he walked up to the boy before bending down and grabbing him by his chin. What happened to all that bravado you were showing a moment ago, brat? Giller asked sadistically as he forced the blue-haired boy to look at him directly where his eyes would be behind his mask. An evil grin appeared on his face when lifted the boy into the air as high as the boy's shackles would allow him. Faster than Fatty and Skinny could follow, Giller punched Jell in his gut. His oversized fist easily covered the boy's body. The blow knocked the air out of the boy's body and caused him to cough up blood as he fell onto the ground. 
I may have missed your attempt to rescue that girl a few days ago, but I won't let that happen a second time as she won't be able to take a step inside this room once I'm done with her. Giller stated darkly as walked towards the hallway while Jellal tried to catch his breath only to be electrocuted for his troubles. Keep an eye on this kid and make sure he doesn't do anything. I'm going out to deal with the revolt's leader. He ordered Skinny and Fatty who only nodded dumbly in reply as the massive cultist walked out. What the three cultists were unaware of was the pair of brown eyes that were watching the exchange going from behind the crystal in the room. The mystery person was a young girl with brown eyes and short purple hair. Her name is Altir Milkovich, a 12-year-old girl and member of Grimoire Heart. The little mage was watching as the cultists tried to break the blue-haired boy. Altir frowned as she watched the massive cultist walk down the hallway away from the disciplinary chamber. The moment he was out of sight Altir did a mental sigh of relief, glad to have him out of the room along with his overwhelming presence. Finally he's gone. Altir thought, relieved that she only had to deal with the two idiots overseeing the boy's torture. The mission her master gave her was to sneak into the Tower of Heaven on a possible lead to reviving Zareph. So she slipped abroad on a slave ship undecided that was heading to the island. Upon arriving on the island, she spent the last half hour sneaking through the tower and avoiding armed groups of cultists rushing off to deal with an apparent slave revolt, Ultir found herself in the tower's disciplinary chamber. Okay judging by what those masked freaks were talking about earlier, a slave revolt has been going on for the past few days. A revolt led by a little girl of all people. Ultir thought in bewilderment at the situation she found herself in. This girl could become a problem if she succeeds. I'll just have to make sure her revolution becomes a flop. She mentally declared, unwilling to fail in her mission after all the shit she had been put through getting here today. Now how do I go about crushing the hopes of a girl that's probably younger than me and is willing to stand up against her tormentors after suffering God knows what in this room? She pondered. This continued for several minutes but every time she came close to an idea on how to stop the revolution. Jellal's sudden screams of agony caused her train of thought to come to a screeching halt. God damn it. Altir mentally raged as she lost her train of thought again, due to the blue-haired boy's non-stop screaming. Would they just kill this kid already? He's driving me up the wall with his screaming. His voice should have given out already from how much he's been screaming. She thought as she peered out of her hiding spot to glare at the heaving boy, trying as hard as she could to set the boy aflame with nothing but a thought as his torture resumed. Don't these idiots realize that they're better off just killing him? He knows the leader so it stands to reason he's the reason why she's dot 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 leading dot 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 the revolution. Altir mentally chastised the incompetence she was witnessing before coming to a sudden realization. It was like putting a puzzle together for her. He's the reason. Altir mentally repeated as she stared at the boy while he was being electrocuted. He's the reason why that girl is doing all this. He's her rock. Her support, Altir mentally declared as a wicked grin appeared on her face. And with no support, she thought wickedly at the plan forming in her head as a shadowy ghost-like apparition appeared around her. That girl will crumble like any other fool in her situation. She thought malevolently as she prepared to put her cruel plan into action the moment those two idiots left the room. Altir then uses her magic to slip a ghost-like apparition past the cultists, towards the boy as she waits to put her plan into action. Meanwhile elsewhere in the tower, with the Hero Force Rangers. Haya, Ren cried while suddenly punching a cultist in the face over the edge of the rails lining the pathway he was on. The rest of his friends had already taken out a number of other cultists, without much difficulty as they were lying on the ground in pain or unconscious. The moment they've broken into the tower, the rangers have been fighting against small groups of cultists and some eyeless pink monsters. Some of them can use magic and a lot of them was armed with weapon but it wasn't something they couldn't handle. Momo, Kendo, Awase, and Takoyami were starting to get a handle on their new abilities, but still were lacking in bringing out their full potential. So Holotami was so much such they started their training immediately when they got back home. Those cultists assholes are like bananas. They only come in bunches, Awase said using his welding quirk to stitch their bodies on the floor to prevent them from moving. No kidding, Kendo said holding up an unconscious cultist with her big hand before dropping him. Those guys are petty and annoying to deal with. But they're not that strong. This was too easy. Jiru said unplugging her jack from a cultist. Then we must be dealing with low-level grunts. Ren stated that those guys weren't giving them much trouble. But remember, we don't underestimate our opponents. There might be people here even more powerful than the ones we've been fighting up till now. He said to his team. Agreed. We still don't know what these cultists are fully capable of. Momo agrees with her leader. Ignoring the screams of the cultists in pain. 
The rangers continued to run down the pathway as the sounds of battle began to get clearer and louder. There's definitely another battle going on here, Midoriya said as they've been hearing nothing but fighting since arriving at the tower. That explains why we've been doing so well, Yui said while running beside her team. While the cultists are dealing with that, it makes our job much more easier, Jiru said out loud. I agree, we never would have made it this far without some kind of assistance, Takoyami said before they felt an explosion that made the area shake violently a little. Well, whoever they are, they must be kicking some serious ass, the waste commented. We can worry about that after we find Simon and the other slaves, Ren said as he and the others ran down the stone pathway of the tower, trying to find any sign of Kagura's brother or slaves. This tower is like a maze. It would be almost impossible to find anyone if you don't know where you're going, Momo said as they made no progress on finding the boy or any slaves after spending the last half hour just running up and down the pathways of the unfinished tower. No one said this would be easy, but all we can do now is keep on advancing, Holo Tommy said to them. Easier said than done Tommy. We've only been running into cultists and dead ends since arriving on the island. Oase complained a little as he was getting tired of running around blindly. Wait, I just realized something. Yui said as she made everyone stop running while they were looking at her. Do we even know what Simon looks like? She asked making the other's eyes widen in shock. This made the whole team expect Yui, slap their hands over their faces at how they could forget about asking Kagura something so important. God we're stupid. How can we forget to ask something that important? Ren shouted while mentally kicking himself at his own carelessness. We were so focused on saving him and the other slaves that it must have crossed our minds. How can I be so careless? Momo said pinning her brow in annoyance. I guess we still have a ways to go before being heroes. Midoriya said pulling his hand off his face as they needed to find a new way of finding Kagura's brother. Then suddenly he opened his eyes and slammed his fist into his hand as a new idea sprung into his mind. Oh, I got it. We can just find someone who knows where Simon is. The green hair boy suggested to his friends. Concerning that he's been here for a while, it makes sense that someone might know him. Takoyami said with a nod. Okay, we got a plan. Would just have asked one of the slaves if they know where he is. Kendo said as they continued down the spiraling stone pathway. After several minutes of searching, the rangers spotted some cultists and pink-eyed worm dogs making their way to the ongoing battle down below. One of them managed to spot the heroes in training from the corner of his eyes. Intruder. The cultist shouted quickly alerting his comrades. Here we go again. Yui said quietly as they were spotted. Man, we don't have time for these idiots. Ren muttered as the cultists and monsters charged at them brandishing swords, magic staffs, claws, and fangs. Everyone get ready. He said to his team as they got into fighting stances before rushing at the cultists and monsters. Ren rushes up to a cultist holding a sword with the man swinging it down at him. But Ren quickly evades the attack by moving to the side and then grabs the man by the wrist before twisting it tightly to make the cultist howling in pain, dropping his weapon. Then the ranger hits the cultist under his chin with a power palm strike that sends him into the air. But Ren quickly grabs onto the man's legs then spins him around rapidly hitting multiple cultists and monsters surrounding him out cold before throwing him away into a wall hard. Ren leaps over to the left and does a spin kick at a cultist's chest, knocking him away before jabbing another one from behind with his elbow then grabs him from behind by his robe and tosses the masked man over his shoulder into a pile of rocks. Kendo leaps through the air at an incoming cultist who swings his sword at her but she kicks the blade away with her left foot and knocks him away with her other foot before landing. Then Kendo jumped in the air again to do a spinning psychic at another cultist, right before one more brought down a sword at her only for the marital artist to stop the attack by grabbing the man's wrist with her left hand, all while punching him in the stomach to knock the cultist out cold. She then does a small back flip to dodge an incoming attack from a spear before leaping in the air to perform a roundhouse kick on the spear user as she lands her body on the floor, then quickly uses a low sweeping move on a nearby cultist that made the man flip over on the floor as Kendo uses the momentum of the low sweep to stand back on her feet quickly. Kendo then throws a punch at a monster running towards her and uses her quirk to make her fist larger which sends the pink monster and other cultists flying away. Midoriya releases one for all at 12% before dashes at a cultist grunt at a breakneck speed to deliver a crushing elbow strike in his stomach that sent the villain rocketing back in pain. The other cultists and monsters around him began to attack the green-haired boy, but Midoriya reacted quickly enough to avoid the attacks by moving to the left and jumping onto a wall. Midoriya then leaps off of the cave walls back and forth taking out a number of cultists and monsters quickly at lightning speed, 
leaving behind green flashes of electricity before making his way to the top of the ceiling, hanging upside down looking at a large pink-eyed monster. He then leaps straight down very quickly to perform a powerful drop kick on the monster's back that kills it along with destroying most of the ground floor. Jiru faces a group of cultist grunts wielding spears changing at her. But the punk rock girl own grins as she quickly does some fancy fighting moves, before striking a wolf battle pose. When they got close to her, Jiru was easily able to hold them off while moving swiftly and nimbly with lightning fast kicks, punches, and jabs taking out a few of them in the process and then sticking two jack into two of the cultists' neck before unleashing an unbearable sound wave attack for them, as they collapsed unconscious. She immediately jumps back to get some distance while spinning around in the air before landing on her feet facing the remaining cultists. Jiru then brought both her hands up and started to channel purple colorless energy before sending it flying at cultists, causing a small explosion that knocked them down unconscious. The Oase runs up to a cultist who tries to cut him down only for the boy to quickly avoid the attack, then grabs both of his arms and uses his quirk to weld the cultist's arm sleeves together, sticking them in place. This shocked the grown man as he tried to break free to no avail which made a waste smirk in amusement as he slapped the cultist in the face and grabbed his sword before kneeing him away. A waste then uses the sword to slash through three pink monsters, killing them in the process, before colliding with one of the cultist's swords, holding the man in place. Another cultist grunts rushing at him from the right, making the boy push the cultist he was holding off back and then slashes at the man's sword to stop the assault before delivering a high kick to the cultist's neck that knocks him out. Momo makes a sword with her quirk and blocks a cultist's sword attack before countering with a kick to the cultist's stomach that sends him to the ground. Then she swings her blade to the right to cut down a pink monster that jumps at her, right before hearing a cultist changing at her from before with his spear to impale the girl. But Momo ducks on the ground before avoiding the attack and then turns her body to the right to do a low sweep that knocks the masked man off his feet at a group of other cultists, as they all fall down together. The rich girl then uses her creation power to make a sticky bomb and throws it at the down cultists. It releases a powerful glue-like substance that holds the group in place while they are trying to break free with no luck. Takoyami faces a group of cultists that hold magic staff and begins to charge up their attacks to launch magic at him, but he quickly summons Dark Shadow which surprises them. That gives him enough for Dark Shadow to reach the group and swing his claws down on the cultists, which sends them soaring back on the floor in pain. A pink monster rushes at him from the left side and tries to bite him, so Takoyami immediately jumps to the side to avoid the attack and delivers a kick to its side that makes the monster fly away from him. Takoyami then ordered Dark Shadow to finish off the beast with a powerful uppercut. Yui sees a group of cultists flying pink-eyed beasts heading towards her and they flow down at the quiet girl to kill her. Yui then spots some pieces of broken wood on the floor and grabs a handful of them with both of her hands before throwing the pieces air at her attackers, only for the cultists to laugh at the pathetic attempt to get them. But the joke was on them because when the pieces of broken wood were close enough to hit the cultists, Yui put her fingers together to enlarge the pieces of broken wood to the size of a human-sized head surprised the cultists, as they were bombarded by a hail of flying piece of wood that killing their monsters and sends them falling the ground. Yui then ran up to the falling enemies and hit each one of them quickly before they landed on the ground, as they cried out in pain. Now that all the cultists were knocked out and pink monsters were dead, the rangers could relax a little bit with the evil mages down. That takes care of this group, Momo said letting out an exhausting sigh not that she was that tired. Wonder how long before we run into another one, Mawase asked the others. Hopefully not too long, Yui said with a blinking expression. Let's just keep on moving. Our mission isn't over yet until we find the slaves, Takoyami suggested as the group nodded to one another before continuing forward without missing a beat. The group of heroes began passing by empty cells as they were making their way towards the lower levels. As they were continuing, Jiru picked up on faint voices hiding somewhere just a few levels beneath them. Hey, guys wait, Jiru said stopping the group as they turned to her. I just heard two voices close by. Really? Cause I can't hear anything with all this noise going on. Kendo said as she only heard the battle going below them. Jiru's quirk let her hear even the faints of sounds, so it would make sense for her to pick it up, Midoriya explained to them. If Jiru said she heard something nearby, then we should take her word for it. Ren said having faith in his teammate. Thanks, ma'am. Jiru said with a little blush on his face. You think it's more cultists or possibly some slaves? Yui asked and worried. Probably, but let me check first. Ren said waving his glowing green hand in the air, using his psychometry ability to sense the auras in the nearby area, and feel multiple small energy signatures below them. 
Hum, looks like the auras I felt are pretty small and don't hold any negative feelings like the cultists have. He said to the other, so you're saying they might be the slaves we're looking for? Momo hopefully asked, maybe, but we wouldn't know until we confirmed it for ourselves. Ren said to his teammates as he grabbed a hold of the railing and jumped off it. Let's go, he said letting gravity pull him down with the other rangers following him from behind as they jumped off the railing. Once they reached the level Ren felt the energy signatures, he stopped himself and the others descent by using his ninja ranger to manipulate the wind to blow his team forward on the other side of the tower to a different area. With everyone landing on their feet perfectly, this power belongs to Shane Clark, the Red Wind Ranger. Due to his affinity for air, Shane can control the element of air for effects including projecting gusts of wind as an offensive weapon, and walking on air as if on solid ground. Nice leader, Kendo complimented her friend. Indeed, helping out your comrades every step of the way, Takoyami said with a tiny smile. I aim to please, Ren said with a grin on his face. Anyway, this is where I felt those auras. Okay, so where is everyone? Oase asked as he and the others looked around at the cells that lined the walls of the pathway. They're here, just keep searching, Jiru said to everyone as they began to look around the room. A sudden gasp coming from one of the cells in front of them caught the rangers' attention and made them turn their heads towards the cell on the left side. The Hero Force Rangers caught sight of multiple children dressed in slave clothes hiding behind the bars of her cell with worried looks in their eyes. The first one was a white-haired girl with purple eyes. Her name is Serrano. The second was a black-haired sleeping boy with plum-colored lipstick and dark eyeliner, holding an axe covered in blood. His name is Macbeth. The third was a black-shaved-haired boy with a long nose. His name is Sawyer. The fourth was a spiky-haired boy with a small purple snake wrapped around his wrist. His name is Eric. The last one was a large chubby boy with brown hair. His name is Richard Buchanan. Each of them minus the Macbeth had sacred looks on their face as they were terrified for what was going to happen next with those new strangers. The rangers each had a shocked look on their faces as they didn't expect it to be this bad. Their clothes were torn. They had multiple cuts and injuries all over their bodies and had magical cuffs attached to their wrists. It was painful and heartbreaking to see children in such a horrible condition, and this has increased a newfound rage and desire to stop those cultists. Bastards, Holo Tommy thought in disgust, especially Ren, as he had a quick flashback on how this scenario is how he first met Iri. He used every ounce of power to keep his anger in check as there was not time for him to lose his cool. There was a time and place for him to let loose, and this wasn't it. This child would have to come first, then the cultists second. Taking a few deep breaths to calm himself down, Ren slowly walked up into the cell with the slave children as some of them backed away in fear. He stopped a few meters away from them and spoke calmly so as not to scare them. Hey, are you kids? But he was then cut off. SHHH. The children interrupted Ren as they placed their fingers over each of their mouths before frantically looking back at the sleeping boy behind them in worry. This made Ren and the others blind in surprise as they did not expect that from them. Hey why are you Ren was cut off. SHHH. Do you not know what SHHH means? Serrano interrupted him again before turning her head to check on Macbeth who was facing away from them. Seeing that the sleeping boy wasn't going to wake up anytime soon, she wiped off the sweat that was pooling on her head. Serrano soon turned around to the other kids as their faces were sweating profusely in fear too. Ren looked over the white-haired girl to see why she and the others were so scared of waking the sleeping boy behind them. He was the only one either as his friends also noticed the signs. Why are they afraid to wake up that boy? Holo Tommy thought in curiosity. Hey kid, what's wrong? Ren asked in a low voice, genuinely curious why she and the other kids were so unwilling to wake up the boy sleeping on the ground. Just shut up and move out of here. Serana whispered harshly as she turned Ren around and pushed him out of the cell with all her strength, despite the age and height difference between them. He please, just do as she says Mr. Sawyer whispered in worry. The last thing you want to do is wake him up, Eric added with his own whisper. And he's super scary when he wakes up, Richard whispered in fear. Ren didn't argue back at her, as Serrano was manhandling him only for the ranger to notice a trail of dry blood leading towards the sleeping boy. Macbeth soon turned over onto his other side pointing at the cell wall. Ren only blinked as Serrano struggled to push him out of the cell and several feet down the stone pathway, as his teammates and the others killed followed them in silence. Okay, so do you mind explaining to us why you wanted to be so quiet around that sleeping boy? Ren asked as he raised an eyebrow at her strange behavior concerning the sleeping boy they were moving farther away from. Yeah, I would be really helpful if you just fill as in kid, Awais said to her. First things first my name is Serrano, not kid. Serrano corrected him in a low voice as she put more distance between the group and Macbeth in the cell. 
Second, Macbeth over there has been trying to sleep since this revolt began a few days ago, and all the constant fighting has kept him from doing that. She explained, this time with a higher volume after checking to see if they were out of Macbeth's hearing range. A revolt. You mean the slaves of this place are fighting back against the cultists? Kendo asked her. Yes, it has been like this for the past few days, Richard said with a nod. Ah, so that explains all that fighting we've been hearing. Takoyami said as that was one mysterious solution. A revolt? Good. Holotami thought happily. I still don't see the problem with that has to do with the sleeping boy. Jiru stated simply with a raised brow. Did she forget to mention that Macbeth snapped a day ago and began killing anyone that disturbs him from his sleep? Why do you think he's covered in blood and sleeps with an axe that I have no idea how he got his hands on? Eric asked the rangers, which is why we're so scared of waking him up. Sawyer said nervously. The heroic teens just cringed at the thought of that and were a little disturbed by how violent that little boy was, but couldn't blame Macbeth as any person would have a mental breakdown in those conditions. That's a bit worrisome to hear, Momo said with a frown. Talk about waking up on the wrong side of the bed, Yui commented quietly. Wait if he kills anyone that wakes him up then why are you all staying near him? Midoriya questioned the kids, causing them to look a little worried until Serrano spoke up. It's not like we have a choice, Serrano muttered to them. This is the only place we could find that was safe enough for us to hide out until the revolt ended. Since most of the workers are fighting down below, those masked jerks don't come up here often. And those that do end up a bloody mess due to messing with Macbeth over there. She explained as she pointed towards the cell that she left Macbeth slumbering and his rangers listened. You poor things must have had a rough time living in this horrific place, Momo said in a heartbroken tone. That's not even the half of it lady, Eric said with an irritated look while petting the snake on his wrist. It's pretty much like this every day until the other slaves started to fight back. Okay now that we are done talking about us and our reasons for hiding, answer us this. Who the hell are you people and where did you come from? Serrano asked harshly as she and the others looked over the ranger's state of attire, noticing they weren't wearing rags like any of the other slaves they'd met since her arrival at this godforsaken tower. Funny you say that because we also have questions of our own, Ren said with a chuckle, but I guess introductions are in order to avoid calling each other by some weird nicknames. He stated to them, I'm Ren Amamiya, I'm Izuku Midoriya, Midoriya said putting on a smile, Momo Yeyurazu. Momo said introducing herself. I'm Fumikage Takoyami. Takoyami said to with a nod. Yui Kodai. Yui said in her usual neutral tone. I'm Itsuka Kendo. Kendo said with a kind smile. The name's Awase Yosu. Awase said with a smile. Hi, Kayoka Jiru. Jiru said before asking something else. So what are your names? Then each of the kids started to introduce themselves to the rangers. I am Sawyer. Sawyer nervously said in fear. My name is Richard Buchanan. Richard said to them. Eric. Eric simply said. And Serrano. She said before pointing back at the cell they were in. And that boy back there name is Macbeth. Serrano then turned back to the teens. Now who are you people and why are you here? She demanded again. To answer your question we came to this island to free all the slaves being held here and put an end to this cult for good. Takoyami answered honestly. The group of slave children stared blankly at the rangers in surprise at their answer. Why why you really came here to save us? Sawyer asked in disbelief. That's right. So there's no need to worry another because we're here to stop those villains. Momo said to them with a smile. I don't believe you. Serrano answered skeptically, not buying their answer for a minute. Same here. Eric said having the same level of skepticism as Serrano. What can the eight of you do against a whole army of those mask freaks? We have our ways, kid. And besides what reason do we have to lie to you? Always countered them. Well, when you put it like that, Richard muttered. Whether you believe us or not, it's the truth. Ren said with crossed arms, thinking that there were some things more important to attend to. But can you tell us if you've seen a kid named Simon around here? The main reason we came here to this island is because his little sister asked us to find him. He asked, plus to also help the people here, Yui added. Oh really, Serrano said skeptically again as she crossed her arms deciding to play along with the older kid's apparent story. Then why would you go so far for this girl and her brother? The white-haired asked trying to see if those people was the real deal instead of a liar like all the people she's met here who only look out for themselves. Yeah, why are you going so far to help a bunch of strangers you don't know? Eric asked harshly not understanding what was going through their heads. Do we really need a reason to help people in trouble? Midoriya answered simply, his serious tone catching the skeptical Eric and Serrano, along with Sawyer and Richard off by surprise. We're heroes and power rangers. We don't need a reason to help someone in need. Jiru said to them seriously. Yeah, it doesn't matter to us if it's a bunch of cultists 
or a group of monsters. Well, punish anyone who deserves it, Kendo said with a grin. As I said before, we were serious about freeing everyone in this and that includes the five of you kids too, Ren said to them with a smile. So please tell us if you know anything about Simon. Any type of lead would help, Yui asked them in a soft tone. Both Serrano and Eric's eyes softened slightly when they heard their reason beginning to understand why the teens were going so far for this little girl and every other slave here at the tower. Sawyer and Richard's eyes widened in amazed at how heroic the rangers were acting for them. The four slaves didn't know why they were feeling this way but the image of the power rangers saving them from this nightmare came to the forefront of their minds. Serrano and Eric both looked at each other in surprise for a moment before sighing at one another, then faced the rangers again. Look we don't know anyone by the name of Simon here. We've all been too busy trying to stay out of the fighting to ask names. Eric answered honestly causing the rangers to look disappointed at not getting any closer to their goal. But I think there's someone who may know him down at the base of the tower, Serrano said causing the heroes to listen up. Really? Who? The Wace asked harshly. We haven't met her. But apparently the person leading this revolt down below is a little girl with red hair who may know who you're talking about since I've heard she only confides to kids that are around her age. Serrano explained as she pointed downwards. Maybe one of those kids is the boy you're looking for. Really? Then we've got to go find this red-haired girl. Midoriya exclaimed happily. It's the best lead we have so far, so let's do it. Momo agreed with a nod. Yeah, but what are we going to do with them? Takoyami said pointing at the children. We can't just leave them here alone. We can't take them with us because we might run into cultists again and our ship isn't going to land on the island until it's all clear, Yui said to everyone. T there's no need for you to do that for us, Richard said in a fearful tone. We can just wait here until the fighting is over. Yeah not going to happen, Ren said in a serious tone. We're not leaving you kids here by yourself defenseless. Your safety comes first. That's good and all, but how are you going to do that? Eric questioned them in a flat tone. The team of rangers then looked at each other to figure out a plan. So does anyone have any bright ideas? Oase asked the group but no one said anything as they were deep in thought. That's until Ren came up with an idea on the spot. I got it. Ren said getting the others' attention. Oase, why don't you use your ninja steel powers to teleport them to the Legacy Galleon? He suggested making his friend's eyes widen. Oh yeah, that could work. The waste cried out. Wait, are you saying you can transport us to your ship? Sawyer asked in surprise. Yes, it's one of his many abilities, Kendo said as her classmate puffed his chest up proudly. We said we were going to help you all and we're not going to break our promise. The kids looked pretty excited as they were finally able to leave this hellhole of a tower. But what what about Macbeth? He'll kill all of us the moment we wake him up, Richard pointed out to everyone. After hearing that the exciting looks on the kids' faces vanished and were replaced with horror at the thought of waking the boy up, that could pose a problem, Holotami commented with a frown. Macbeth was something the rangers could easily handle but didn't want to take any chances with the other kids around. Excuse me everyone, but I have a suggestion for that problem, Momo said raising her right hand before using her quirk to create a pair of headphones. I used my quirk to make some soundproof headphones. If we put them over Macbeth's ears, he won't hear a thing and we can safely teleport him along with the others. She said as everyone there was impressed. Nice thinking there, yeah Momo. Kendo said hitting the girl in the back lightly. That's our second in command for you, Midoriya said as Momo just smiled at this. Are you sure that is a good idea? Serrano question is in doubt. Putting the headphones on him won't be a problem. But we might want to take that weapon away from him first. Takoyami said as everyone nodded in agreement. Yui, think you can shrink that axe of his? Jiru asked the quiet girl. M.M., Yui said with a confident nod. Okay, let's do it but quietly, Ren said as everyone returned to the cell quietly, hoping not to wake up the sleeping beast of a child. When they arrived, Macbeth was still sound asleep holding on to his bloody weapon. The group looked at each other and nodded to one another as Ren stepped forward to be the first to do something, as the slave children kept their distance in fear that this whole thing might backfire. Ren then used another one of his ranger abilities called telekinesis, as Macbeth's whole body started to slowly levitate off the ground while he was still sleeping and holding on to the axe. This power belonged to Andros, Jane, and Caron, the red and silver space rangers and lost galaxy pink ranger. The people of Co-35 are born with telekinetic powers that let them move objects with their minds. Ren gives a quick hand gesture to Yui, as she quickly but quietly walks over to a floating Macbeth, 
and touches the axe with her left finger. Yui then activated her quirk to shrink the axe down to the size of a penny. It fell out of Macbeth's hands and hit the floor, barely making a sound with everyone sighing in relief as they were about to disarm the sleeping danger threat. With another hand gesture, Momo walked up to Macbeth and gently placed the soundproof headphones on his head without waking him. Did it work? Sawyer hopeful asked. Only one way to find out. Bren said pulling out his legacy gun and then pointing it in the air before firing off a couple of loud shots at the cell ceiling that the children flinch in fear. Seeing that Macbeth wasn't didn't react to the gunfire it worked. Looks like it worked. Okay, we can talk freely now. He said putting his weapon away. Did you really have to do that? Serrano shouted angrily at the ranger. Hey, it worked didn't it? Ren said shrugging his shoulders as he slowly lowered Macbeth back on the floor. That's not the point. Serrano shouted again. Now, now, let's just calm down Serrano, Richard said holding onto the girl's shoulders. That's one problem solved. Now all of you from up together, so a waste can send you to our ship. Takoyami said to them. With that said Serrano, Richard, Sawyer, and Eric walked over to Macbeth as they were standing together with a waste in front of them, ready to send them away. Do you see I? This ye Yorazu. Do you hear me? Momo said pulling out her morpher to contact DECA. Yes, I hear you. How can assist you? Do you see I? Asked Beck. We just find a group of slave children and we'll be teleporting them back to the ship. Be sure to let Kagura know in advance. Momo informed the AI. Do you see I? Said before going silent again. Okay, I'm going to use my power to transport you to our ship outside of the tower. A waste said pulling out a wand before pointing it at the children. Here's a hands up in advance. Simon's little sister Kagura is on broad so don't do anything to scare her okay. He told them. We wouldn't and thanks. Eric said with a nod. Alright, Oase work your magic, Midoriya said to him. Oase nodded moving his wand around as it started to glow blue. Then he shouted a blue light at the group of kids and they disappeared in a flash of light. Did it work? Jiru asked out loud. Do you see I? The kids on board the ship. Ren asked the AI. Through his morpher, yes, they've just arrived and are a little shocked but unharmed. DCA said to the rangers, All right, keep us posted and contact us if anything happens, Ren said before ending the conversation. Not bad on using your powers, Oase. Thanks, leader, Oase said with a confident grin as he spun the wand in his hand. Okay, with that out of the way, we have to look for this red-haired little girl that Serrano was talking about in order to find Simon. Kendo reminds everyone of their original mission. They said that she's down below fighting against the cultists. Holo Tommy said to his students, which means if you just follow the sounds fighting, you won't miss her. Doesn't sound too difficult, Takoyami commented. But before that, I want to try something, Ren said getting everyone's attention. What would that be? Yui asked her crush. Ren only just grins before saying, First off, Midoriya, Kendo, Takoyami, Momo, and Oase, hold out your morphers for me please. He asked his team. The said rangers were confused at first, but did as Ren said and held out their morphers to him. What are you planning on doing? Jiru asked with a raised eyebrow. You'll see, Ren said before he held his morpher. Tommy active pirate legacy mode. He asked the AI, with an excited expression. Holo Tommy just smiled as he knew what Ren wanted to do and was too active in the program. Then Ren, Kendo, Takoyami, Momo, and Oase Morphers began to change to the Mobile 8 Morphers and Midoriya's Morpher changed to the Legacy Cellular as six Pirate Legacy Keys appeared in each of their right hands. What happens to our Morphers? Oase asked looking at his Mobile 8 Morpher and Ranger Key. Wait, I recognize these Momo said remembering the combat training on the second day of school. Isn't this the same Morpher you used during our combat training? She asked getting a nod from the quirkless boy. But why did you change our morphers like this? Takoyami asked in curiosity. You see I asked Tommy to make a program in the Master Morpher so that the six of us can use the powers of the Pirate Legacy Rangers. Ren said to them. I figured that using their Ranger powers would help in the long run if we ever come across a powerful enemy. Then we can change into different Ranger forms to make things easier. He explained to his friends. That's actually pretty smart. The Pirate Legacy Rangers' fighting style was pretty tricky for their opponents because they were about to change different forms in the middle of a fight, Midoriya said with excitement as his inner fanboy was showing again. I'm really proud of this program that Ren suggested for me to create. I'm just a bit disappointed that I or the original Tommy never thought of the idea, Holo Tommy said. But what about our other morphers? Takoyami asked an important question. Don't worry about that. Once I end the program your morphers will return back to normal. Holo Tommy explained to his students. I see, but I feel kinda sorry that Jiru and Yui will be left out of this. Kendo said to them sadly. I don't really mind. Yui said with her usual expression. 
Yeah, maybe next time. Jiru said playing with one of her jacks. Suo, are we going to look for this girl or stand around here all day? Midoriya asked out as everyone was ready to leave. Let's move out rangers. Ren said as he and the others turned towards the railing lining the pathways and jumped over the railing to the lower levels of the tower. Elsewhere at the lowest level in the tower, a massive battle raged on as large numbers of slaves fought against the numerically inferior, but better armed cultists, who were aided by worm dogs and flying eyeless beasts. At the center of the battle was a young, red-haired girl named Urza, fighting with all her might as she parried a sword swing that could have easily decapitated her. Urza quickly bashed her makeshift shield into her opponent's abdomen knocking a man easily twice her size onto his back. Despite missing her right eye, the girl easily held her own as she immediately dodged a spear thrust and proceeded to slice off the bladed edge with her sword. The cultist stepped back in shock at how Urza broke his weapon before the girl rushed him and kicked him in the stomach. Don't waver. We will win our freedom. Urza shouted to the rest of the slaves fighting around her. Her words seemed to invigorate her comrades to fight harder against their oppressors. We must continue forward and liberate the 8th sector today everyone. She shouted as she blocked a charging worm dog with her shield before thrusting her sword into the beast's soft underbelly. Urza's really going at it, huh Simon? Wally asked a boy next to him as they both watched Urza pull her sword out from the dying monster and flick it to the side to clean it of any blood that got on it. We'll probably get to gel today at this rate. He mentioned that the boy, Simon, just watched Urza argue with some older slaves about the number of enemies they would face if they attempted what she asked. A luminescent blush was on his face as he kept his eyes on the one-eyed girl. As the cultists began to fall back due to the falling numbers, Simon just pushed Wally aside as he walked towards Urza. Urza, Simon stated somewhat calmly. His heart began to beat rapidly as his cheeks flushed. What is it, Simon? Urza replied, not noticing his flush appearance as her mind was on other things. Can you please make this quick? We have to advance to the other sectors so we can save Jell. Do you like Jell? Simon interjected, catching Urza off guard as Wally, Miliana, and Sho watched in surprise and shock at Simon's sudden question. W why are you saying that now? Urza replied, flustered by the unexpected question from her friend. Now's not the time for this, Urza, Simon stated firmly as he tried to build up the courage to say the next few words. If we don't make it out of here alive, there's something I've always wanted to tell. Hey, we got trouble. A group of slaves shouted from atop a cliff across the area as Urza and Simon turned their heads in the direction of the group. What did they say? Urza asked confused, inwardly relieved that a distraction came up. I don't know, Simon replied just as confused as the redhead. Just as the group was about to shout their warning again they heard a loud noise that made every slave there look up to see a group of eight teenagers on top of another cliff, wearing mating clothes as they stood next to each other looking down on the slaves. Many of the slaves were surprised by this as Urza, Simon, and their friends watched as they looked at the new individuals in curiosity before all the slaves gathered around to see what was up. A withered old man named Rob just watched curiously a few feet from behind the group of slaves, deciding to see how things would play out. So those are the slaves, huh? Kendo asked as she knew the answer. Yeah, and it looks like they've taken care of all of the cultists here, Jiru said looking at the aftermath of the battle. Not bad for a bunch of people being enslaved, Away said with interest. Most of these cultists are magic users and taming those monsters. It just shows how determined they are to regain their stolen freedom from those villains, Takoyami said with a nod at how brave those people are. While all that changing now that we're here, Midoriya said seriously. M.M. Yui agreed with a nod. Hey, who are they? Simon asked not noticing the strange looks he was receiving from Wally, Sho, and Miliana. Don't know but have you seen those people before? Wally whispered to Sho, who shook his head in reply. Nope, I haven't seen anyone with clothes like that around here. Sho replied as he pointed towards the ranger's clothing, which stood out against the rags every slave was forced to wear on the island. Maybe they're new slaves that those jerks brought in recently. Miliana suggested trying to add her input to the conversation. As the slaves were talking among those about the new individuals they'd never seen before, the Hero Force Rangers decided to make their move. Momo, I need a megaphone please, Ren asked his second in command. Right, Momo replied before making a mini megaphone for her leader and handing it to him. Thanks, Ren said before stepping forward to the crowd below he then raised the megaphone to his mouth to speak. Excuse me everyone, but can I have your attention for a moment? He spoke into the megaphone for all the slaves to hear. We're the Power Rangers Hero Force, and I'm their leader Ren Amamiya. He pointed his thumb at himself. And those are my teammates. He gestures to his friends. After Ren introduced the team to everyone there, the slaves started to mutter to themselves. Power Rangers. A slave woman wondered. I never heard of them. 
Are they a part of a magic guild? Another slave asked in wonder. You all are probably wondering who we are and why we're here. Well to answer your questions, we're here to save and free all of the slaves being held prisoner in this dump. Ren said making the slaves gasp in shock as they didn't expect to hear that. But before that, we're looking for someone among you. A little girl with red hair who is leading your revolt. He said making everyone's eyes widen as they knew he was talking about as all looked directly at said little girl. Huh? Urza said in surprise. They're looking for Urchan. Miliana said in a worrisome voice. What would they want with her? Simon said in a protective tone. It was then Ren noticed all the slaves looking directly at Urza. His stared down deeply at the red-haired girl causing her to take a step back in shock when she noticed. That other rangers spotted her too as they managed to successfully from the person they were looking for. Found her, Ren said pointing down at the girl. Well, that was easy. Yui bluntly commented. Yeah, let's head down and ask her where Kagura's brother is. Kendo said as all the rangers jumped down off the cliff into an open space within the crowd of slaves. As the heroes landed, each one of the slaves immediately moved out of their way as they made a clear path to Urza before the rangers started to approach her. W what? Urza asked, a little weirded out by how the rangers were walking up to her. Hey kid, Ren started before stopping in front of her with his arms crossed, remembering how Serrano and the other kids described what their leader looked like. Dot 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 you the one leading this revolt. He asked the girl calmly. Yes, Urza replied feeling unsure of how to answer this stranger, causing all of her friends to give the rangers strange looks. Good cause we need you to help find someone here. Do you happen to know a kid named Simon and where we can find him? It's really important we find him. Ren asked causing Urza's eye to widen in surprise. Hey, why do you need to know who Simon is? Wally asked accusingly, trying to act tough for the others in case those strangers turned out to be hostile. The main reason we come to this dreadful place is because his little sister Kagura asked us to come and find him. Takoyami answered making everyone's surprise. Urza's eye widened at the mention of Simon's little sister having regretfully forgotten her in the chaos of the past few days. Simon, on the other hand, was stunned as his eyes were as wide as dinner plates at the mention of his little sister Kagura. Faster than the others could react, Simon rushed towards Ren and grabbed a hold of him by a white hoodie. Wait you know Kagura. How is she? Is she alright? Where is she? Simon asked frantically, slightly shaking Ren's body at the same time as Urza tried to stop him. Simon stop. He won't be able to answer you if you keep shaking him like that. Urza shouted, trying to calm her emotional friend down. Despite being shaken violently, the ranger's eyes widened when he heard Urza mention Simon's name. Wait, you're Simon. Midoriya shouted in surprise and pointed at the boy. But you and Kegura don't look alike at all. He exclaimed. Before Simon could yell at him for his reaction, a large explosion went off in the distance. Everyone turned their heads towards the cliff the rangers jumped off of and saw a large cloud of smoke coming from it as the charred bodies of the slaves that were standing on it fell to the ground. What the Simon muttered only for Midoriya to drop at the boy to move them both to the ground as a magic blast nearly struck them, making everyone's eyes widen at the sudden attack. More explosions ranged through the air as multiple magic blasts shot out from the smoke screen sending slaves flying from the blasts and scattering the rebel army. Urza and her friends along with the hero force rangers were among those still standing by the time the smoke cleared, allowing them to see their attackers. What the? Urza asked aloud. None of her friends could answer as they all paled at the sight of their attackers while Rob just grimaced. Floating in the air were dozens of zombie-like creatures that only wore large purple hats, ragged shorts, and the cultists mask over their eyes. Not good. Holo Tommy thought in worry. Magic soldiers. A person screamed as the magic soldiers' jaws unhinged and magical energy formed in their mouths. Once done charging their attacks, the magic soldiers fired off several magic blasts across the battlefield, scattering the slave army as multiple slaves were struck head-on or sent flying by the resulting explosions. Look out those masked freaks are coming back. Another person shouted as he pointed forward causing Urza her friends, and the rangers to turn in the direction that person was pointing at only to see an army of cultists approaching, all of them armed with magic staffs. Ha ha ha, you little worms have done it now. A masked cultist dressed in an orange robe, holding a magic staff said as if he was the one leading the attack. In the name of our almighty lord Zareph, you slaves will suffer for defying his holy will. He stated pointing his staff forward to cause explosions with his magic that hit a few of the slaves as the other cultists followed suit. This is bad, Kendo said covering her face from the smoke and derby. They outnumbered and overpowered now. At this rate, the slaves won't last long, Oase said as they saw more magical attacks heading their way. The group of rangers barely managed to dodge a few of the blasts sent at them but was unharmed. 
Aw oh, jeez. Enough already you stupid morons. Jiru snapped in irritation. What'll we do? Momo asked in worry before looking at Ren who was angry. He was watching the slaves running for their lives as the cultists were attacking them without mercy, laughing at the sight of their pain as they were enjoying every second of this. Ren just balled up his right fist in rage, as he couldn't forgive any one of these bastards for what they did. I don't like it. Ren uttered in a calm rage before walking in front of his team. We might be heroes in training but, let's be pirates right now, he said making the others smile in determination as they knew what he meant by that. At the sight of the magic soldiers and the approaching magicians on the ground, multiple slaves chose to run away instead of taking on what they thought to be an impossible foe. Hey, where are you guys going? Urza shouted at the retreating slaves as the magic soldiers and cultists opened fire on the retreating army, injuring more people in the process. Urza we need to retreat. Wally shouted at the girl as he helped show, who had been caught in one of the blasts, onto his back. We can't beat these guys. They're too strong. He's right Urchan. Miliana shouted in panic as she tried to help an injured man back onto his feet. We can't give up guys we need to save Jell. Urza shouted back, refusing to let an army of magic soldiers and cultists stand in her way to rescue the blue-haired boy. Simon, with a serious expression on his face, went up to Urza and slapped the girl in her face, stunning her and everyone around them as explosions went off around them. Urza I know how much Jell means to you. We all know. Simon started as he grabbed a hold of Urza by her arms. Everyone was still too stunned about his earlier actions to notice what the rangers were doing. But right now we're all no good to him if we're lying dead in a crater in this tower. He began to shout, raising his voice in the process. Wally's right in that we need to retreat because if don't we're all going to die here. And there's not a damn thing we can do about it Urza. He shouted pleadingly trying to get the girl to understand. Simon, Urza muttered as he saw her friend break down before her. Before she could reply, however, Urza caught sight of a magic soldier charging its shot from the corner of her left eye. Noticing that the zombie creature was aiming towards her and Simon, Urza acting completely on pure instinct, pushed Simon away and shoved him to the side just as the magic soldier fired its shot. ERZA, Simon and the others shouted as Urza put up her shield in front of herself just moments before the magic blast reached her. No one but Rob noticed that the rangers had disappeared from their spots, with Ren moving in a burst of speed as he made his way to Urza. When the magic blast hits its mark, the resulting explosion causes Simon and the others to cover their eyes from the bright light. The RZA, Simon shouted in horror as he tried to rush into the smoke where Urza had been standing only to be stopped by Rob who held him back. What are you doing Rob Jaisan? Urza could be hurt or worse. He screamed at the old man tears were streaming down his face at the thought of Urza having been killed. Just watch Simon. Rob said calmly with a smile on his face as he held the distressed boy back. Not everything is as it seems in this world. He said sagely, already knowing what had happened. Simon looked back to the smoke screen and as it cleared, to his surprise and joy, Urza was still standing there with her shield raised to defend herself. Urza opened her remaining eye and was surprised to find that she wasn't hit by the magic blast. She then noticed as the smoke cleared away even more that Ren was standing in front of her protectively as one of his hands was stacking out forward with a giant blue energy shield in front of him, as she thought he was the one to stop that attack. Hey kid, you're alright, Ren said making the shield disappear from sight. Urza was too in shock to say anything but nodded to him dumbly, remembering how Ren blocked a magical blast not too long ago. Good, cause I suggest you step back for this next part, Ren said drawing out his legacy gun. Before Urza could say anything a large explosion was made which made her, and the other slaves looked to see some of the cultists' army being sent flying back into the air. They were confused about the slaves until they noticed what it was the Power Rangers doing as they witnessed the team of heroes driving back the army of cultists, magic soldiers, and beasts, and also helping the fallen slaves get to safety. Go back to the others. Me and my friends will handle the rest. Ren said to her in a non-questionable tone, leaving no room for argument with Urza who nodded dumbly again as she tried to process what he had just done before running back to her friends. With her gone Ren ran towards the army of magic soldiers and cultists, who turned their complete attention towards his team. Meanwhile, the cultist dressed in orange who was leading the attack was furious with what he saw. He was planning on hitting those ungrateful prisoners with a large army of his comrades once they were worn down from the fighting and crushing their little revolt. But some unknown brats that he's never seen before just showed up and are messing up everything. He gritted his teeth in frustration until gunfire was heard and a number of his soldiers near him were taken and intact. Who did that? The cultist dressed in orange demanded out loud as all fights suddenly stopped to a halt. 
Everyone then turned and saw Ren, Momo, Takoyami, Kendo, Midoriya, Yui, Awase, and Jiru walking towards the cultists' army side by side with all of them having serious expressions on their faces, as Ren was holding up his legacy gun in his left hand as he was the one responsible for firing those shots before lowering it to his side. Ren and Midoriya were in the middle of Takoyami and Momo on Midoriya's right side, and with Awase and Kendo on Ren's left side, as Jiru and Yui were standing next to Momo on her right side. The cultist dressed in orange growled as he looked at the rangers in anger, as the team of heroes stopped a few feet away from the cultists. You bastards, just who are you and what do you think you're doing? The cultist dressed in orange asked in anger, Isn't it obvious? Protecting those people from your little group of course. Ren answered with a smirk, Huh? What a joke. You think playing hero will do you any good here? The cultist dressed in orange said while laughing with the other cultists joining in too. Shut up, idiot. Jiru taunted back with a grin on her face. Ay, I idiot. The cultist dressed in orange stuttered in a gasp, as it made him and the others stop laughing. You guys don't realize just how screwed you are right now. Away scoffed with a little grin. I'm afraid we have no intention of listening to anything you have to say. Momo answered with a smile, especially to heartless villains just as yourselves who worship a false god. Takoyami said in a venomous tone. Me too. I hate guys like you who abuse the weak and helpless for fun. Midoriya shouted while pointing at the cultists. But that changes now that we're here to stop you creeps. Kendo said cracking her knuckles. M.M. Yui cried out in agreement with a serious expression. Have you stupid brats lost your senses? We are servants of the great Lord Zareph, the most powerful dark magic user to ever exist in the world. Is magic rivals that of a god? The cultist dressed in orange bragged in a cocky attitude. Fighting us is the same as investing his holy wrath. Do you know what happens to those who defy us? He asked holding up his magic staff. We sure do, and we don't care. Ren said to them in a non-caring tone. Because when we see something we don't like, we wreck it. He said as he and the others brought out their morphers. Ren, Awase, Kendo, Takoyami, and Momo brought out their mobilate morphers and Midoriya brought out his legacy cellular while holding up their pirate legacy keys. Yui changes her Gosai morpher into Dino Charge morpher and holds it with her right hand and Dino Charger with her left hand. Jiru changes her Dino Gem bracelet into the Wolf morpher and had it on her left wrist. That's what it means to be a pirate, right? Ren asked showing a cocky grin on his face. Behind them, the Urza, her friends, and slaves were watching and hearing all of this in worry. What are they doing? Are they trying to get themselves killed? Sho asked aloud. No one knew how to answer his question as they watched what was happening. There's no way they can fight all of those jerks by themselves, Simon said in agreement. Urza, in particular, was watching the rangers closely trying to figure out what they were planning. Rob just looked at all of this in interest as he had a feeling that these kids were about to do something incredible. Ready? Ren asked his teammates. Ready? They shouted back at him. It's Morphin time. They all shouted together as they activated their morphers. Ren, Awase, Kendo, Takoyami, and Momo flick the Mobile 8 morphers open, then hold up the pirate legacy keys with their right hands before flicking them open to reveal their keys. Midoriya on the other hand flicks the legacy cellular case open then holds up the pirate legacy silver key with his right hand before putting the key in his morpher case and closing it. The five rangers with the mobile eight morphers quickly twisted their bodies to the right side in their own unique way before posing with the pirate legacy keys forward and the morpher across his chest. Midoriya on the other hand crossed his arms with his left arm in front before pushing them forward, posing with his morpher. Pirate change. They shouted together before Ren, Awase, Kendo, Takoyami, and Momo twisted their body once more and put their keys into their morphers as they turned the lock. Midoriya meanwhile, quickly shifted his body to the left to strike a pose, then raised his legacy cellular in the air. He then moves his hand back down, holding his morpher behind his left side, and then pushes a button on the device with his right hand. When that happened, the mobile eight split open to reveal two blades on the top of the morphers they glowed red as Ren, Awase, Kendo, Takoyami, and Momo then thrust their mobile eights forward in front of themselves, while each of them got into different poses. Midoriya on the other hand thrusts the legacy cellular forward in front of himself with his right arm back balled in a fist posing, while his legacy cellular was scanning the pirate legacy silver key from inside the case. Dino Charger, ready. Yui shouted while holding up the Tricera Charger forward before clicking a button on it, 
activating it. Yui then quickly spun herself to the left side before stopping in place. Then Yui was doing a series of motions until she popped the barrel open before inserting the Dino Charger into the muzzle of the Dino Charge Morpher. Once that was done, she pressed down the mouth on the Morpher. Tricera Charger engaged. A voice announced from the Dino Charge Morpher while Yui twirled it once as she was holding it with both hands. Yui then brought her Morpher to her right side and said, Energize, right before spinning the barrel with her left hand as it shot forward, creating pink sparks while the barrel was spinning. She then thrust the morpher forward in front of herself. Unleashes the power, she shouted while spinning her right arm around before pointing the Dino Charge Morpher straight into the air. Jiru opens the head of the wolf morpher. Jungle Beast, Spirit Unleashed. Jiru shouted while thrusting her hands back, then brought her right arm to the left side and grabbed it with her left hand, before posing like a wolf. The background changes to outer space as the rangers are standing there with their arms down to their side. Then a big X's of different colors zoom through the rangers, changing their clothes into a black leotard with the pirate legacy logo on the center of their chests, and a pair of white gloves. Another big X's of different colors zoomed at them again, forming their vests, and boots. Suddenly, two smaller X's of different colors appeared behind each of them and formed their helmets with the Pirate Legacy logo appearing next to the foreheads of the helmets. Except for Midoriya whose helmet just appeared on his head with a silver X. Completely the transformation as all their helmets briefly shines for a moment. Yui pulled the trigger as a pink energy Tricera head came out of the morpher while she was standing in a black void area with the Tricera head logo under her feet as her body started to glow bright color light except her head and hands. The Tricera head was flying around in the air and then started to flow near Yui until it came behind her and chomped its mouth down on her, forming her ranger suit before chomping again, forming the helmet on her head, completing the transformation. Jiru flips a switch on the wolf morpher and it starts to glow yellow like the moon, as she is standing in the middle of a forest at night. Then Jiru started to do martial arts wolf poses, while her body was surrounded by a purple aura. She then brought her hands back before thrusting them forward with the wolf animal spirit coming out. Jiru rushes into the wolf animal spirit, as it forms around her body turning into her ranger suit. Suddenly, her helmet formed from behind her head with the moon in the background before she struck a pose and more of her took different ones. Suddenly, the screen got scratched out to reveal Jiru and the wolf spirit Zord. For the others who saw them change into their ranger forms, they saw big excess of different colors coming out of their devices as they moved through them changing their clothes into a leotard and a pair of white gloves with other big excess of different colors zooming at them again, forming vests and boots on them. Suddenly, they saw two smaller X's of different colors appear behind the rangers and create helmets on their heads with the logo appearing on the foreheads of the helmets, except for Midoriya whose helmet just appeared on his head with a silver X as all their helmets briefly shined for a moment. They saw Yui pull the trigger on her T-Rex-shaped gun as a pink ghost-like dinosaur head came out, flying around in the sky. Then they saw it head back to Yui as it circled around her before chomping its mouth down behind her and forming her ranger suit before chomping again for a second time to form her helmet on her head. They saw Jiru flip a switch on her morpher, then it started to glow yellow. Then they saw her doing martial arts wolf poses while her body was surrounded by a purple aura. Jiru then brought her hands back before thrusting them forward, when they saw a purple wolf coming out. Then saw her rushing into the purple wolf, as it formed around her body turning into a suit. Then they saw a helmet formed from behind her head. Urza, her friends, the slaves, and every single cultist there were completely shocked at what they had just seen the rangers do as they began their roll call. Red Pirate Legacy Ranger Ren shouted while flicking his vest collar with his right hand. Blue Pirate Legacy Ranger, away shouted while merely tilting his head down, as his right hand made it slightly like he was adjusting his helmet. He wore a blue vest that resembled a pirate's jacket with a pop-off collar and a golden belt wrapped around the waist. The front of the helmet resembled a pirate's hat. It had a thin visor with two tiers going down on both sides, as his visor was more sharp-shaped. The emblem on the suit was also printed on the helmet. Yellow Pirate Legacy Ranger Kendo shouted while crossing her left arm across her chest with her right elbow on her left hand before she waved down in a gesture, giving a peace sign. She wore a yellow vest that resembled a pirate's jacket with a pop-off collar and a golden belt wrapped around the waist with a skirt under the belt. The front of the helmet resembled a pirate's hat. It had a thin visor with two tiers going down on both sides, as her visor was U-shaped. The emblem on the suit was also printed on the helmet. Green Pirate Legacy Ranger Takoyami shouted while shifting his body a bit, 
putting his hands on his thighs and rubbing them slightly as he introduced himself. He wore a green vest that resembled a pirate's jacket with a pop-off collar and a golden belt wrapped around the waist. The front of the helmet resembled a pirate's hat. It had a thin visor with two tiers going down on both sides, as his visor was more square-shaped. The emblem on the suit was also printed on the helmet. Pink Pirate Legacy Ranger, Momo shouted while raising her right hand before lowering it to her chest as if introducing herself elegantly, slightly bowing to her audience. She wore a pink vest that resembled a pirate's jacket with a pop-off collar, and a golden belt wrapped around the waist with a skirt under the belt. The front of the helmet resembled a pirate's hat. It had a thin visor with two tiers going down on both sides, as her visor was heart-shaped. The emblem on the suit was also printed on the helmet. See Ilver a pirate legacy ranger. Midoriya shouted while holding his word longer than the others, with him raising his right hand in the air, and bawling left hand in a fist, holding it to his side. His right hand then slowly descending down as he held it forward before spinning around to the right, and then spreading his arms out wide striking a pose. He wore a silver vest that resembled a pirate's jacket with the collar folded down and a golden belt wrapped around the waist. The helmet was black and silver with an anchor symbol on the top of it, as the visor gold-like shades. Then suddenly, a giant black flag with the Pirate Legacy Rangers logo on it appears behind them, as the pirate flag was waving freely. Power Rangers, Ren shouted before he and the rest of his teammates started to get into different poses. Pirate Legacy, the six of them shouted together in sync for everyone to hear. Triceratops, Dino Charge Pink Ranger, Yui shouted as the Triceratops symbol on her chest quickly appeared behind her, and then a roaring Tricera Zord and Tricera Charger right next to her, all while she was doing poses. She wore a pink suit, but the arms had scales on them while wearing white gloves and boots. On her waist is a small belt buckle wrapped around her with a holder for the morpher and a skirt. On her chest was what looked like a dinosaur skull with yellow teeth, but on the left chest piece was the symbol for a triceratops. And finally to top it off was a helmet with a triceratops design, line teeth surrounding the rims and blue eyes while a silver mouthpiece was on it. With the courage of a wolf, Jungle Fury Wolf Ranger, Jiru shouted while she was doing martial arts wolf poses. Rangers forever, heroes all together. The two of them shouted together in sync for everyone to hear while getting into new poses. Power Rangers Hero Force, Jiru and Yui both shouted with the Power Rangers Lightning Bolt logo appearing behind them. Then each one of them broke their poses before standing up straight to say something else. Rangers forever, defenders together. The rangers all shouted together in sync for everyone to hear. We are Power Rangers. They posed together before a giant explosion occurred behind them, leaving everyone watching this stunned. After the Power Rangers got done announcing themselves to everyone present, Wally's, Shows, Miliana's, and all the other slaves' eyes popped out of their heads and jaws hitting the floor in shock at the absurd sight. Urza and Simon's eyes just widened in shock with their jaws hanging open wide at the scene before them while Rob just smiled as he watched. Well, this feels great, the way said feeling the power. Increase, Momo said in awe as she looked at her new appearance. Now this is amazing, Kendo commented happily. I can get used to this, Takoyami said as he never felt such power before in his life. Hell yeah, man, Dark Shadow said inside of him. Back at the cultists, they were beyond shocked by what they saw as they didn't expect that from the rangers. Are they requip wizards? One of the cultists grunts yelled out in shock. So what if they can use requip magic? That doesn't mean all eight of them can't stop us. The cultist dressed in orange arrogantly said as he managed to get all of his allies out of their shock. Now seeing that the time of talking was over, the pirates' legacy rangers each draw out their weapons with Jiru and Yui getting into fighting stances. Let's make a show of it. Ren exclaimed before pointing his legacy gun forward at the enemy and started to fire off multiple shots that took out a few of the cultists and magic soldiers which only enraged the group. GRRRR, kill them. The cultists dressed in orange ordered in rage as the cultists' army ran forward at the rangers. Then the rangers charged forward at the cultists' army with both groups starting to clash with one other, as Urza, her friends, Rob, and the rest of the slaves watched the battle from a safe distance. At the fight, Momo was standing on a destroyed structure before throwing a grappling hook attached to her sword in the air at something to hook on to. She then shoots two cultists near her before dodging an attack from behind her by a magic soldier, by spinning and kicking the magic soldier off the structure. Heads up, Momo shouted running off the destroyed structure then started swinging in the air thanks to her grappling hook while shooting the cultists pink eyeless beast, and magic soldiers below her before landing safely on top of another structure, and meeting the remaining cultists at her side. 
as Momo quickly unattached the rope on her legacy saber then started to swing and shot her weapons at the cultists. In another destroyed structure, Kendo ran while shooting down two pink-eyed monsters. Out of the way, Kendo yelled while still running then slashed two cultists with spears down before stopping to turn around and shoot another cultist with a sword behind her before running off again. Kendo ran up to a magic soldier cutting it while turning back around before shooting one more magic soldier on her left then quickly shot a second one rushing her right side. Kendo notices a cultist behind her ready to launch a magical attack at the girl before she kicks him off from the top of the structure. The waist jumped from a metal working structure to a pile of boulders, avoiding enemy attacks by barrel rolling on the ground then quickly regained his footing and delivered slashes to the magic soldiers next to him. Those new powers rock. Oase happily shouted while running and hopping down the pile of boulders, before Barrel rolling down onto a large working table as he made his way back to the ground floor. Oase then started to swing his sword around at nearby cultists and magic soldiers before looking back up behind him to see a flying eyeless beast coming at him but Oase fired his legacy gun at the monster shooting it down for good. Takoyami was on top of a large cliff fighting off magic soldiers before he did a backflip off the cliff to dodge an attack from the enemy, and he fell down to the ground. Dark Shadow, Takoyami cried out to his partner while free falling. On it, Dark Shadow shouted before coming out of Takoyami's back and flew up to grab onto a railing lining that slowed down his partner's descent to the ground. Below him, Takoyami sees a group of cultists and comes up with an idea. He took advantage of his position while starting to bungee jump up and down thanks to Dark Shadow's assists. As Takoyami kept on bungee jumping, he was slashing and shooting the foes down around him at the same time, while the cultists were having a difficult time trying to land hit him. Midoriya activities won for all at 12% before dashing forward at a group of cultists, magic soldiers, and eyeless monsters much too fast for them to even react and appear right in front of the group. Legacy Spear Smash Midoriya shouted while swinging his spear across the army which created enough force to cause a powerful wind pressure that sent a number of them flying back in the air as they were screaming in agony. But Midoriya wasn't done yet, as he ran at the nearest cultist and spun his back around to drive another attack from his spear that sent him flying, then spun his weapon around before thrusting it to impale pink monsters killing the beast. Midoriya quickly got his spear out of the monster to reflect a few magical blasts right at him into the sky that luck hit the flying eyeless beast. Then in lightning speed rushed at the ones responsible for attacking him and taking them out in an intense before performing a flying side roundhouse kick on five cultists' face that knocks them out cool, as the boy took a spear stance. Jiru rushes at a group of magical soldiers and cultists while dodging their magic blasts before leaping in the air to deliver a knee jab to a magical soldier that knocks it to the ground. Then runs at another foe to grab a cultist's arm to hit the man in the face with her left elbow making him fall. She blocked another spear attack with her right wrist with lightning fast reflexes then quickly spun to the left to hit a cultist in the face. With her right elbow before a magical soldier ran Jiru for the girl to swiftly knee the magical soldier in the stomach and moves on to another magical soldier as she grabs it by the shoulders to knee it in the stomach before letting it go. Two cultists attack Jiru from behind but aren't quick enough as Jiru counters with a roundhouse to their faces. To slow, Jiru yelled running up behind a cultist and climbing up their back, then elbow strikes them on the forehead which makes them faint before back kicking an eyeless pink monster. Dino Blade Blaster Yui shouted while switching her morpher into the Dino Blade Blaster as a group of magi cultists fired magical attacks at her. But the quiet girl was acrobatic jumping over to the left side with cartwheel flips before spinning around multiple times, facing the magi cultists with her blaster pointed at them. Rapid blast. She fired a volley of pink shots rapidly like a machine gun taking out all the magi cultists in only three seconds. A cultist runs at Yui before swinging down his sword at her, but Yui blocks the attack by raising her blaster above her head then counters with a strong kick to the stomach that knocks him back. She kicks one more cultist rushing at her before behind with a back kick then jumps over to the right with a corkscrew spin to kick a magical soldier in the back of its head and lands on the ground to fire more lasers at multiple pink eyeless monsters next to her, killing them. Ren ran past a number of foes before jumping up to an eyeless beast, kicking off it to jump onto a wooden platform, where two cultists with magic staffs were standing. Eat this, Ren shouted while landing on top of the platform next to the cultists before taking them both out by delivering two quick slashes at the men. Ren quickly shot two magic soldiers below and two eyeless pink monsters jumped at him from both sides but slashed the beasts down in an intense. He noticed two cultists with swords approaching him from behind. 
So Ren did a corkscrew flip on a lower platform as the two cultists ran up to him and swung their blades straight down at the ranger. But Ren raises up his legacy saber to block both of the two cultists' attacks before shooting both of them. Ren then took a quick glance to his right side before throwing his legacy saber at a magic soldier next to a waist, impaling the zombie in the chest and stopping its movements, which surprised the blue ranger a bit. Guys, let's change things up, Ren suggested as he noticed Takoyami, who was on a metal structure running from some flying pink eyeless monsters as they were firing magical attacks from above. Okay, Takoyami who heard Ren stop for a brief moment to throw his legacy saber to Ren before jumping off the metal structure and summoning Dark Shadow to grab a hold of something to swing him in the air. Roger the captain, away said throwing his legacy gun to Ren. Ren saw the two weapons coming at him, then kicked the gun towards Takoyami's direction with his left foot, while spinning his body around to grab the sword with his right hand before dodging a cultist assault from behind and slashing the man in the back. Dark Shadow swings Takoyami to where the legacy gun is for the Green Ranger to grab it with his free hand and then starts shooting down the flying beasts from the sky. Oase picks up the sword that was stuck from a magic soldier's chest and starts running at a number of enemies slashing every single one of them with a dual welding sword style before stopping an attack with both of his blades. He cuts the cultist in his chest to take him down for good, and then a group of magi cultists gather together and fire off multiple fire spells at the boy. Oase quickly noticed this and took action as he deflected each spell with his swords, as the deflected fire magic spells were hitting random enemies behind him. Ren runs up to magic soldiers cuts them down with his sword and spins around more cultists, to evade their attack like a football player before turning back at the cultists, pointing his gun at them as he opens fire to defeat them. Midoriya hoops onto an eyeless monster's back using it to leap over to a group of enemies and slashes them all away with his spear while using the momentum he builds up to spin around before throwing the legacy spear to impale multiple magic soldiers. Bring it, Midoriya exclaimed getting in combat stance before doing a corkscrew side flip to a group of cultists, before kicking one in the chest sending him flying due to the force of the attack. He then blocks a few incoming attacks with his arms, right before jumping on the side of a pile of rubble behind him and then leaps off it to another pile of rubble dodging the cultist's attacks and landing on the ground. A cultist swings a spear down at Midoriya, only for the Silver Ranger to block it with his left arm then counters with an elbow jab to the cultist's face, then ducks under another incoming attack from his right side as Midoriya grabs the cultist's weapon before kicking him away in the stomach. Midoriya then dropped on his knees to perform quick multiple low sweep attacks that knocked the cultists surrounding him off their feet before standing back up to jump over to where his spear was and grabbing the weapon to strike at more magic soldiers. Meanwhile, the yellow and pink pirate legacy rangers were right next to each other fighting off their opponents. Kendo slashes a magic soldier down while spinning to her right to kick a cultist behind her. Yeah Momo, let's switch too. Kendo shouted to her before tossing her legacy gun at her. Momo quickly cuts down an eyeless beast before facing Kendo. Understood. Momo replied with a nod before tossing her legacy saber at her. After the quick exchange, Momo spun around before crossing her arms up together while holding up her guns. And Kendo slashed an eyeless pink monster die before swinging both her swords around. Momo jumped to another destroyed structure full of magic soldiers and started shooting at them before dropping to the ground on her back to avoid flying pink monsters' attacks from above. Then the pink ranger pointed her guns up at the eyeless flying monsters and returned fire, killing them all. Momo quickly got back up and then started firing shots at nearby foes in multiple directions before twirling around while shooting more enemies down. Kendo jumped into the air performing a front flip in the middle of a group of enemies, then ran up to a magic soldier and slashed it down with both blades. She turned to the right slashing an eyeless beast with her swords that was running towards her right before swinging her sword at a cultist on the girl's right. Time to end this, Kendo declared while swinging around her sword in her right hand. The yellow ranger then attached ropes on both the legacy saber for her to hold the swords. Saber whip. Kendo started swinging her weapons around skillfully, slashing every single enemy surrounding the girl before returning the weapons to her hands. Jiru was dodging multiple enemy attacks before striking a cultist behind her in the face with her right elbow, and then quickly hitting him again with her left elbow knocking him out. The wolf ranger sees a magic soldier in front of her and then kicks it twice before the girl leaps into the air forward performing a corkscrew side flip and kicks a flying monster upside its head sending it crashing on the ground as she lands back on the ground. Then a group of cultists charges at the girl only for her to smirk. 
Let's get this over with. Wolf Morpher. Jiru shouted holding her left arm and moving her right hand to the Wolf Morpher to open the head before pressing the underside button on the Morpher, making it shine for a brief moment. Jiru began to do arm motions before bringing her left arm back to her side. As the ranger's left arm ignited dark purple energy and then she thrusts her left arm to release a beam of energy at the cultists that caused an explosion that wiped them out in a second. Yui shifts her body back to avoid an attack from a cultist kicks him down in the back, then leaps onto a magic soldier's back and quickly jumps off the soldier like a spring broad to do multiple backflips that knock it over, with Yui blasting a nearby eyeless monster dead as she landed on her back. She immediately jumped back on her feet as a large cultist rushed up at her for an attack, but Yui kicked him twice in the left rib to stop the large man. Gotta be quicker than that, Yui said before leaping into the air and raising her right leg high before bringing it down on top of the cultist's head that knocks him out unconscious. Yui was done yet as she leaped again with both of her legs spread out to her sides hitting two more cultists under their chins and making them fall over. And then she did a couple of backflips to get some distance from the enemy to try something else before removing the Dino blade from her morpher. Energize, Yui shouted while spinning the barrel on her morpher with her left hand before pointing it at the enemy as it was charged charging up pink energy. Dino Morpher Blast She fired a powerful pink laser blast at cultists, eyeless pink beasts, and magic soldiers causing an explosion that took them out. As all of this was happening many of the slaves watched the battle in both shock and amazement at how the rangers were outmatching the cultists they were having a hard time fighting, as they couldn't take their eyes off the action. Jay just who are those guys? Simon asked in awe as he and the others stared slack-jawed at the rangers' display of strength while Urza stared at the team of heroes in awe having never seen anything like what he just did before. I don't know, but they're strong. Urza said in awe at how well they were performing as a team. Back to the battle, as the rangers took out all the cultists there a second wave of them suddenly appeared. Reinforcements, good. The cultists dressed in orange said with a grin. Crush the non-believers in the name of Lord Zareph. He ordered the other cultists with the rangers to regroup. Geez, there's no end to those guys, Jiru complained with annoyance. Looks like they're planning to come at us in waves to tire us out, Midoriya said stopping one for all, as he figured out their plan. Makes sense, since they outnumber us, Yui said. But it won't work on us, Ren said getting in front of the group. Let's step up our game with legendary ranger mode, he suggested. You mean like back at combat training? Hell yeah, bro, Away said with a smile. That's a good idea, Kendo commented. I'm all in too, Takoyami said as well. Yeah, Midoriya said with a nod. Yes, let's. Momo agreed too, right? Ren said before looking at Jiru and Yui who were left out. Yui and Jiru, the both of you do as you please. Got it, divided by MM. The both of them said before running off to their own devices to take care of enemies. Then the pirate legacy rangers formed up together before pressing a button on the top of their belt buckles to summon their ranger keys, grabbing it with their right hand, and then opening up their mobilates with their other hands. For Midoriya, he just opened the case to the legacy cellular. Legendary ranger mode, Mighty Morphin. They all shouted together while holding up their Mighty Morphin ranger keys before flicking them open, except for Midoriya. It's Morphin time. They then inserted the keys into their morphers before moving them forward, as six power coins of different dinosaurs appeared in front of them before consuming the rangers to change them into new suits. Ren was the Mighty Morphin Red Ranger, Oase was the Mighty Morphin Blue Ranger, Kendo was the Mighty Morphin Yellow Ranger, Takoyami was the Mighty Morphin Black Ranger, Momo was the Mighty Morphin Pink Ranger, and Midoriya was the Mighty Morphin Green Ranger. Witnessing this made the cultists and slaves' eyes widen again in shock for the second time from the unexpected transformation. Jiru and Yui who saw this just smiled as they returned to their own battle. No way, their outfits just changed. Miliana cried out in surprise, as Urza and the rest of her friends were in complete disbelief at what they just saw. Well, now that interesting, Rob said getting over his shock and was smiling to see what was going to happen next. So they are using Requip magic. The cultist dressed in orange cursed under his breath. We will now begin the tower formation attack. Momo suggested bringing out her blade blaster. Tower formation attack. Everyone in position. Ren agreed pulling his blade blaster while everyone did the same and got in position. Let me join in. Midoriya asked. It's never been done with six rangers before. 
Okay, Ren nodded to him, as everyone stood next to each other and had their blade blasters in stick mode. Midoriya, Kendo, and Momo jumped backward, forming a tower with Ren, Takoyami, and a waist at the bottom, Kendo and Momo in the middle on their shoulders, and Midoriya at the top, on Kendo and Momo's shoulders. This confused everyone watching as they had no idea why they did something so ridiculous. Tower up, Ren ordered. The rangers pointed their blade blasters into the center of the tower, as blasters started to charge up energy that created a hexagram orb of light. Fire, they shouted together before firing the hexagram orb straight at the cultist's army. When the blast made contact with the cultist's army, it caused a massive explosion that took out a quarter of their forces which surprised the slaves as they didn't expect to see that. Damn that pest! The cultists dressed in orange shouted in rage as the explosion caused a smoke cloud that covered their vision. Before they could recover, the rangers bust through the cloud of smoke holding different weapons than the ones they used for the combo attack and to strike at the cultists. Power bow, Momo shouted while jumping in the air before firing multiple pink arrows at flying eyeless pink beasts in the sky, killing them as they exploded. Power daggers, Kendo shouted while slashing and stabbing magic soldiers dead as they collapsed. Power lance, Hawes shouted while helping Kendo deal with the magic soldiers by cutting them down as well. Power X, Takoyami shouted while slamming his weapon down on the floor slips the ground into two and makes the eyeless pink monsters fall to their death. Power Sword, Ren shouted while slashing at every cultist in his sight as he didn't give them a chance to even think or make a move. Dragon Dagger, Midoriya shouted while activating one for all again, but this time at 15% because it felt like all of this fighting had helped him grow a little bit to handle even more of this quirk's power without the backlash hurting them. Midoriya moved a little bit more faster than before as he helped Ren deal with the cultists, taking out a number of them with his dragon dagger at lightning speed, as he is now able to use one for all at 15% which makes the boy happy. Can't wait to tell All Might about my growth, Midoriya thought with a smile as he was still taking down cultists in the blink of an eye. Ren stopped himself when a magical attack flew by his left side, as the enemy regained their senses and began to counter-attack the rangers. How obstinate! Takoyami groaned as he and the others were fighting off the cultists. Ren blocks an attack with his sword before holding up another ranger key, flicking it open. Everyone, let's try another mode change. He ordered his team. Right, the five shouted together. Soon they all regrouped once more and had their backs against one another in a circle, surrounded by the cultists before the six all pulled out a new set of ranger keys and their morphers, quickly flipping them open except for Midoriya. Legendary ranger mode, samurai. They all shouted together while holding up their samurai ranger keys. Go go samurai. They then inserted the keys into their morphers before moving them forward, as six different giant kanji symbols appeared in front of them, stopping the enemies from assisting them and pushing the cultists back as kanji symbols consumed the rangers to change them into new suits. Ren was the red samurai ranger, Oais was the blue samurai ranger, Kendo was the yellow samurai ranger, Takoyami was the green samurai ranger, Momo was the pink samurai ranger, and Midoriya was the gold samurai ranger. They changed their outfits again. How do they keep doing that? Sho shouted in surprise as his friends and the other slaves were wondering the same question. It has to be magic. Urza muttered in awe as she was beyond impressed with what she was watching. Back to the action, the rangers each pulled out the swords from their hilts before charging and easily slashing their way through the cultists, pink-eyed monsters, and magic soldiers. After making quick work of their foes, the pirate legacy rangers regrouped and pulled out a third set of ranger keys to use. Legendary ranger mode, mystic force. They all shouted together while holding up their mystic force ranger keys before flicking them open, except for Midoriya. Magical source, mystic force. They then inserted the keys into their morphers, and six magical circles appeared above their heads and descended down on the rangers' bodies to change them into new suits. Ren was the red mystic ranger, Oais was the blue mystic ranger, Kendo was the yellow mystic ranger, Takoyami was the green mystic ranger, Momo was the pink mystic ranger, and Midoriya was the Solaris knight. A third transformation this time, A. Rob said with interest as he could feel strong magical power coming off all six of them now. Each of the rangers flipped their capes to the side before pulling out their magi staffs and Midoriya's laser lamp. Magi staff, laser lamp, full power. The six rangers shouted together as they held up their weapons in the air before they started to glow in their respective colors, before blasting six different elemental attacks at the remaining cultists. 
pink-eyed monsters, and magic soldiers, wiping them out in a matter of seconds. There was only one enemy left, and it was the cultist dressed in orange as he was beyond shocked at how his brothers in arm were taken out so easily by a couple of children. But soon his shock turned to rage as he wasn't going to let things end here like this. That was quite the show you put on. But I've grown tired of it. Now fall in the name of our Lord Zareph. The cultist dressed in orange stated before raising his magic staff as a big spell circle appeared underneath the ranger's feet. Die. Then multiple explosions went off, with the six rangers were engulfed in the blast as Ren let go of his magi staff as it flew above the explosion changing back into the legacy saber. But suddenly, Ren jumps out of the fire to grab his sword, back in the red pirate legacy form. With the rest of his teammates doing the same thing as they've reversed back to the pirate legacy rangers before falling the cultist dressed in orange, slashing him one by one with their weapons. Ren ran back up to him, cutting the man's mask off to reveal his face then swung his blade at him again. But the cultist blocked Ren's attacks with his magic staff, only for Ren to kick the man in the chest, knocking him back a few meters. Midoriya suddenly appeared out of nowhere on top of the cultist dressed in orange and brought his spear down at him, breaking the man's magic staff in half before spinning his legacy spear around and then knocking the cultist away a few feet on the ground. Then all the rangers were grouped with each other, with Jiru and Yui managing to finish up their battles as they stood next to the others. Let's end it, Ren declared as he, Awais, Momo, Kendo, and Takoyami stepped forward to end this with Midoriya, Jiru, and Yui just standing there behind them as they weren't needed for this next part. Right? The four replied before pressing a button on the front of their legacy sabers, making the cylinders spring up from the back. Then, pressing a button on top of their belt buckles, they pulled out their pirate legacy ranger keys and grabbed them with their right hands. Then the rangers flicked the keys open to insert them into the cylinders with a twist before setting them back down in place, making the symbols on the side glow five times repeatedly in their respective color. Final wave. A voice from all of their weapons announced with the background turning into deep space which surprised everyone there yet again as each of the rangers' legacy saber blades began to glow brightly in their respective colors, charging up power with the pirate legacy rangers taking their own unique stance. The cultists dressed in orange stood back up in time to see their swords glow, and started to suddenly panic in fear as he took a couple of steps back. The pirate legacy rangers took a step forward and raised their legacy sabers to unleash a special attack. Legacy Slash the pirate legacy rangers shouted while swinging the legacy sabers, flinging five different colors of energy slashes at their opponent as all five hits dealt massive damage, with the background returning back to normal. G-O-I-H. The cultist dressed in orange cried out in pain, his entire body crackling in red electricity as he fell to the ground and exploded in defeat before the flames died down to reveal the man unconscious with his robe and most of his clothes gone. Heh. Ren scoffed as he wiped his hand over his blade before flicking his vest collar, seeing they defeated a member of the cultist of Zareph. God, I love being a power ranger, he thought with a smile as he loved this job. Now outside of the Tower of Heaven, two individuals that just arrived on the island standing next to countless piles of black dolls that were the cultists they'd just killed. One was a woman who seemed to be of average height and weight, yet possessed an exceptionally large chest and a curvaceous hourglass figure. Covering her form is a skin-tight suit that further emphasizes her chest, reveals her thighs and partially exposes her buttocks. Her shoulders and arms are concealed by a long, striped jacket with flaring sleeves, a four-way split tailback and a tall and gaping collar that completely conceals her neck. Said sleeves cover most of her hands, which take the form of sharp and scaly talons, whilst a thick pair of bands wrap around the woman's thighs, stopping where a similar set of bird-like feet begin. Her head is adorned with an intricate helmet, covering almost the entirety of her face save for her eyes and mouth. From the sides of the helmet, two long wing-like pieces of hair protrude, curving out around her face. Her hair falls from the back of the helmet as well, passing through her hood to fall to her lower back being wrapped tightly into a thick band. Finishing the helmet is a large gem of sorts, which sits directly over her forehead. Her name is Kayoko, an Ethereus of the Dark Guild Tartaros and a member of the Nine Demon Gates. The other one is a woman, with large breasts, and her most noticeable feature being the two large gold-looking horns protruding from the sides of her head and pointing upwards. Upon her head is a white band that separates her hair, framing her bangs from her hair below the band. Worn upon her forehead is a small circular symbol with a small dot on the inside and surrounded by several dots around the top. Tied around her neck is a small white-colored strap. 
Meanwhile, her attire consists of a very revealing blue-colored leopard-printed kimono, bearing decorative marks on her shoulders. The kimono is wrapped around her torso with a thick, decorative yellow ribbon that ties behind her back, and her outfit is complemented by thigh-high socks that reveal her heels and toes. Her name is Salo, an Ethereus of the Dark Guild Tartaros and its team, the Nine Demon Gates. How disappointing, to think those who serve our lord could be so weak. Kayoka said in a slightly disappointing tone, as she dropped a black doll but expected something like this to happen. It wouldn't even make good foot soldiers if those humans couldn't withstand my curse. I have no need for those who are unfit for enhancement. Agreed. These foolish humans were just an annoyance to Lord Zareph, Sela said in a cold emotionless tone. To think they would use one of his creations to revive him, not realizing that he is alive. She said crossing her arms. True that their desperate attempts to revive Lord Zareph are just a wasted effort. But we can use this to our advantage to take all the slaves they have imprisoned here and see if they have the potential to join Tartaros, Kayoka said with a tiny evil grin before looking at the tower. But of course, Sela said in agreement with her eyes closed. If these humans were good for one thing, it's getting us new members. Now Sela, let's see if those humans gather anyone good enough to join our ranks, Kayoka said willing to fulfill her master's desires for their cause before walking to the tower. Yes, mistress, Sayla said with a light blush on her face as she followed her from behind. Fairy Tale Universe, Tower of Heaven Knight. After the battle against a bunch of the Cult of Zareph members, the Hero Force Rangers were doing a quick celebration as were giving each other high fives and fist bumps. With Urza, her friends, and the rest of the slaves were completely stunned in both shock and amazement at how the team of heroes were about to defeat the army of cultists that they were having so much trouble dealing with. Man that freaking rocked, always shouted in excitement. I know right. I never imagined our first battle against actual villains would be like this. Kendo said doing a fist pump in the air. And these ranger powers are something else, Momo said looking at her hands. I never felt so alive before. Yes, these powers truly are remarkable. Takoyami nodded with a grin. Hell yeah, son. Dark Shadow said inside of him. Welcome to the Power Rangers. Because I have a feeling we'll be doing more self like this in the future. Ren said with a smile. Jez, I can't wait to see what else we fight. Jiru jokingly said in sarcasm as she was also looking forward to what awaited them in the future. Me too. I want to help as many people as we can, as both a hero and a Power Ranger. Midoriya said to them. M.M. Yui agreed with a nod. Okay, now that that's taken care of let's go check on the slaves and see if they're alright. Momo suggested with everyone nodding in agreement before making their way back to the group of slaves. The rangers were casually walking towards Urza, her friends, and the other slaves with Ren being in the front since he was the leader. W who are all you? Urza asked cautiously being the only slave whose jaw wasn't hanging from her mouth. What? Didn't you hear us before? We're the power rangers. Ren simply replied. Power Rangers, Urza asked in confusion as she never heard of them before. We're basically a group of heroes that goes around fighting evil and protecting those who can't defend themselves. Kendo gave a quick explanation to her. Why your heroes? Urza yelled out in shock as the other slaves were surprised to hear this as well. Yep, Yui said with a nod. And we come here for the soul prepares to free you all from this hellish nightmare, Takoyami added in. So have no fear everyone, because we're here to help you, Midoriya said in a confirmed tone just like All Might. Then a couple of seconds later, all the slaves suddenly cheered wildly and circled around the rangers over their victory over the cultists and their magic soldiers and pink monsters, with slaves giving the rangers handshakes, pats on the body and many thank yous. It was a little embarrassing for them to receive such treatment, but also felt good that they've managed to help all of those people. After a minute of cheering and congratulating, the grateful former slaves gave the rangers some space before getting their dropped weapons and tending to their injured comrades. I wonder if this is how All Might and the other pro heroes felt like when they're surrounded by fans. The Wace asked as he was a little overwhelmed by this. Yeah, it's kinda exhausting to deal with, Jiru said in agreement. But it's something we'll have to get used to when we become pros, Midoriya said feeling embarrassed by all of this praise. They were then given no relief as Wally. Miliana and Sho soon surrounded them as they bombarded the young heroes with praise and questions about their powers. Guys, guys, guys let's give them some space. Simon quickly intervened, managing to get his friends to back off. You should go help out the injured. Okay then, if you say Simon. Wally said before walking away with Miliana and Sho to help the injured slaves. Thanks, Simon. Ren thanked the boy, glad that he and his team didn't have to deal with a bombardment of questions anymore. No problem Ren was it, Simon replied to the team. 
you don't mind if ask you some questions about how you know my little sister? He asked trying to not sound suspicious. Sure it's not a problem. In fact, you're going to see her again real soon. Ren said to him. Really? But how? Simon asked in both surprise and confusion. Ren then looked back at his teammates before saying something to them. Go help out the other slaves. I'll explain things to Simon here. He ordered. Right. They all said before quickly running off to help the slaves, as they left their leader alone with Simon. Your sister is on our ship right. Wait for us to return with you, Ren said to the boy. Kagura is here. Simon asked in surprise as he didn't expect her to be here of all places. Yep. And in fact you can talk to her right now. Ren said pulling out his mobile aid before calling DECA. DECA. It's Ren. I need you to put Kagura on the line for me. We managed to locate all the slaves and found Simon. Ren asked the AI. Through his morpher. Understood. I'll be sure to inform her immediately. DCA said to the ranger. Ren then looked at Simon before saying, Your catch. He tossed his morpher at the boy who barely coughed it. Huh? Simon said in confusion looking at the device. Use that to talk to your sister, Ren said to him before crossing his arms together. She's been worried sick about you, and I ended up keeping the promise I made to her. Simon looked at the ranger with a surprised expression on his face before moving the device to his ear. Hello? Simon hesitated to ask. Simon, is it really you? Kegura shouted over the communication line. After hearing his little sister's voice, Simon's eyes widened in disbelief as he was now overflowing with all kinds of emotions knowing that Kagura was alive. Take hey Kagura, I, I can't be believe it. Why you're alright? Simon cried out in disbelief as he dropped to his knees with tears of joy falling out his eyes, knowing his little sister was okay. Ren just silently listens to this but smiles at the heartwarming sibling reunion. This reminded him of one of the main reasons he became a ranger. As Simon was talking to Kagura over Ren's morpher with Ren next to him and the other rangers helping out the injured, Urza just stared in surprise at how quickly her friends had taken to the rangers after their fight against the cultists. However, her mind was somewhere else after seeing their fight, remembering what Rob told her about magic when she first met him. Maybe they could help. Urza pondered in thought not noticing Rob was walking up to her. Urza, Rob stated snapping Urza out of her thoughts. Oh Rob, I didn't see you there, Urza replied looking his way. What's troubling you Urza? Rob asked in a kind, grandfatherly voice knowing that something was troubling the girl. Rob, is it wrong to ask someone you just met a big favor, even if it's to save a life? Urza asked timidly subtly glancing at the rangers. Rob followed her line of sight and smiled when he realized what she meant. Oh, Urza even when you're stuck in situations like this, you still manage to think of others first before yourself. He mentally noted as he chuckled. You'll never know unless you ask my dear child. He replied, deciding to let her make her own decisions. Urza thought about Rob's words for a few minutes before coming to a decision. She quickly turned and walked towards where Ren was as Simon returned his morpher to him. Here you go, Ren, and thanks for looking out for Kagura in my stated. Simon said handing him back his morpher before wiping the tears from his face. I'm just so glad to know that she's in one piece, he said with a smile. No problem, but it's not actually reunited until you see her in person, Ren said to him getting a nod from the boy. Right, Simon said before walking away and starting to help the other slaves. Excuses me, Ren, can I ask you something? Urza asked, managing to get Ren's attention. Ren looked the girl's way and had a curious expression on his face to see what she wanted from him. Sure, so what is it uh? Sorry but I never got your name, Ren said as he didn't know the girl's name. Hearing that Ren didn't know who she was, Urza tried to reason why until she realized he didn't know her name. Oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot to tell you my name. Urza apologized, fully rubbing the back of her head. My name is Urza Scarlet. She introduced herself as she gave a little bow before standing up again. Scarlet, huh? Holo Tommy thought as it was a fitting name for her giving her hair color. You've already met my friends Simon, Wally, Sho, and Miliana earlier, Urza said pointing towards the quartet who were currently helping people who were injured by the earlier attack. Yeah, and you already met my friends, Ren said pointing his thumb at his teammates. So what is it you did need from Urza? He asked Red Red-Headed Girl. Urza nervously gazes down on the ground as she tries her best to ask him for his help. Come on Urza, just ask him. She thought to calm herself down. Ren. The girl started before suddenly falling to her knees as she put her head to the ground, as the ranger was slightly taken back by the Urza's unexpected actions. What are you Ren didn't finish his sentence. Please lend me your strength. Urza pleaded to her friend's shock and ranger's surprise while Ren watched passively. I know it's a lot to ask something like this from someone I just met but I don't have any other choice. Urza. Simon muttered as he helped an injured woman back to her feet. 
The other rangers listen as well while still helping the slaves. My, I, I mean our friend Jell, Urza corrected herself, was taken prisoner by the cultists after he tried to rescue me from the torture they put me through after an escape plan of mine failed and they decided to make an example of me to the others. She explained as Sho looked downwards in shame due to being the real mastermind of the failed escape plan and for letting Urza take the fall due to his own cowardice. I started this revolution in order to save him and to win our freedom from our captors but now I see that my plan was foolhardy and would have gotten most of us killed or worse if you and your team didn't step in earlier. That's why I am asking no begging you, Power Rangers, to lend us your strength so we can save Jell and finally escape this tower to freedom. So please, help us, she begged as she was on the verge of tears after her emotional outburst. Ren quietly listened to the girl's request before he walked towards the prostrating Urza and bent down in front of her as he placed a comforting hand on her head. Feeling a hand resting on her head, Urza pulled her head up to see the Red Ranger up closer. There's no reason for you to beg, kid. Ren said softly as Urza raised an eyebrow wondering why he said something like that. Even if you didn't ask, we were already going to free everyone here. Ren declared as he grabbed a hold of one of Urza's hands and gripped it firmly before helping her to the girl's feet. Now let's go save your friend and get out of this place. Urza was about to tear up when she heard Ren's words but stopped herself as she wiped the tears away with her forearm. Thank you Ren for agreeing to my selfish request. She thanked Ren as she bowed to him. Enough with the bowing Urza. Besides saving people and trouble is what we rangers do for a living. Ren said to the little girl. Is right. A voice made both Ren and Urza turn to where it was and saw the other rangers coming up to them. We're not going to leave anyone behind in this dump, especially this jello boy, Jiru said to her. Yeah, there's nothing we can't do, Oase said to her. As long as we work as a team, Momo said with a smile. Y'all see your friend real so Urza, you have our word on that, Takoyami added on to the girl. Urza couldn't help but have a bright smile as this was the happiest she's been since coming to this hellhole of an island. Urza quick question, Ren said getting her attention. Did everyone here come to this island by ship? Yes, when they kidnapped us the cultists loaded us all on ships, Urza answered. Which means there's a dock nearby, Midoriya said before looking at the little girl. Urza do you and the others remember where the ships are? He asked getting a nod from her. Good cause we have a ship waiting outside to take everyone off the island and we'll load them on board there. Urza's eyes widened in surprise at the reveal. Really? That's great. I can have my friends lead you and the other slaves to the docks while we find Jell. She shouted with happiness. Okay then, here's what we'll do. Jiru and Yui, you both take all the slaves to the docks and call DECA to bring the legacy galleon when you think everything is safe. Make sure you don't leave any stragglers behind. Ren ordered the girls, right? The two girls said with a nod. Midoriya, Kendo, Awais, Momo, and Takoyami, we're going to help Urza find her friend and regroup with the others when we're done. Ren said to them, right? The five said to their leader, oh man with these power rangers on our side getting to Jello will be a breeze for all of us. Wally cheered as Sho and Miliana pumped their fists into the air in agreement. Yeah, Sho and Miliana both cheered loudly with Simon giving an approval smile. Simon, Wally, Miliana, and Sho. Urza began as she walked up towards her friends. I have something very important to ask you guys to do. She stated authoritatively, catching all four's attention and making them turn towards the girl. What is it Urza? Sho asked, curious as to what Urza had in mind for them. Yeah, what is it Urchan? Miliana asked as well. I need you guys to go with everyone else and show two of the Hero Force Rangers to the docks, so they can bring their ship to pick everyone up while I go further into the tower with Ren and the rest of the Rangers. Urza ordered authoritatively. Her sudden order stunned Wally, Sho, Simon, and Miliana into silence. W what do you mean by that Urchan? Miliana asked as she was the first to recover from her shock. Wally and Sho followed suit and soon asked similar questions about why they couldn't go with her to save Jell. While the others bombarded their leader with questions about why they couldn't go with her, Simon was silent as he knew the reason behind why Urza would give such an order. The rangers watched passively from the sidelines as Urza tried to explain to her friends why they couldn't come with her. It makes sense that they would disagree with this, Kendo said sadly. I'm pretty sure anyone would feel like that if their friend is involved. Holo Tommy said to his students. Then the rangers noticed Rob walking up to them to say something to the young heroes. Excuse me, rangers. Rob said politely getting their attention. Do you need something from us, sir? Midoriya said to the old man politely. Sorry to intrude on you like this but I have something important to ask of you young heroes if you don't mind. Rob stated politely with a genuine smile. What is it you need from us, elder one? Takoyami asked curiosity, causing Rob to chuckle at the boy's nickname for him. Straight to the point I see, Rob said chuckling, 
That's just how we do things, Jiru said struggling with her shoulders. Well I better not waste any more time then, Rob stated politely. I need you all to take care of Urza for me in case anything happens while we're separated, Rob asked politely. However, he wore a serious expression as spoke. Wait, what do you mean by that? Oase asked, confused by Rob's request. I am an old man that has lived a long, long life, Rangers. Throughout the years, I have experienced great joys with my dear comrades, experienced incredible losses, and faced unimaginable horrors that no man should ever face. I had all but lost hope after I first arrived on this accursed island. Rob explained in a serious tone, grimacing as he remembered all the horrors he experienced since he was forced to work on this tower. I had all but lost hope of seeing my family again. Until one day, I met Urza. At the mention of the redhead's name, Rob's grimace became a genuine smile. I have never met a child that could keep up such a genuine smile in such a depressing place such as this. Her smile gave me hope for a better future out of this tower. I would do anything to make sure she is still able to smile like that. He explained as he placed his right hand over his heart while the rangers listened intently to his words. You really must care about her don't you? Momo said to him deeply. Of course, she's like the granddaughter I never had. Rob said with a genuine before having a little frown across his face. My body is not as strong as it used to be when I was a young man so I don't know whether I'll make it off this island alive or not. So I'm asking you all to take care of her for me in case I don't make it. Can you power rangers promise to look out for her in the stead of an old man such as myself? He asked sincerely, you got it old timer, we'll make sure to keep Urza safe so don't worry about it. Ren said to him with a smile, Urza will be in safe hands with us around to protect her. Midoriya adds in confidence, mm, Yui said with a nod, good to know that. I knew I had a good feeling to rely on you, Rob said calmly with a smile as he walked away towards Urza and her friends. Come along children, we need to head to the docks if we are to ever leave this island. He called out to Wally, Sho, Miliana and Simon as he walked with the rest of the adults towards the cavern that led outside to the docks. Let's move out, Jiru, Yui said as she raised a fist at the rocker girl. Roger that partner, Jiru said as they both did a quick fist bump before leaving with the other slaves. Good luck you two, Momo said to them both. You guys should go with Jiru, Yui, and Rob to the docks. It's going to be a lot safer than where I'm going. Urza suggested to her friends, most of whom were still against letting Urza go off to the inner parts of the tower without them. All right, let's go guys, Simon said breaking the silence, causing Wally, Miliana, and Sho to turn to him in shock. What do you mean let's go guys? Aren't you mad she's just sending us all off while she goes get Jello by herself? Don't you see anything wrong with this picture? Wally asked angrily while Miliana and Sho nodded in agreement. No, because I know Urza knows what she's doing and she won't leave here without Jello. Simon said rebutted as he looked at Wally from the corner of his eyes. Plus, we'll only just get in their way if we go with her and the rangers. We're just not strong enough to keep up with them. He pointed out causing Wally, Miliana, and Sho to look to the ground in shame, acknowledging that Simon had a point. Well just because that's true doesn't mean I have to like it. Wally shouted angrily. Hey, you, power rangers. He shouted as he pointed at rangers, who had been calmly watching the whole exchange from the sidelines. You better make sure Urza comes back to us in one piece you hear me, or else you'll have to deal with me, mad dog Wally. Wally threatened, trying to sound tough in order to hide his concern. Yeah, you better make sure Urchan comes back to us all right. Miliana shouted trying to sound tough as well. Please make sure nothing happens to Urza and help her come back safely, all right. Sho asked meekly not bothering to hide his concern. Don't worry about her. Urza will be safe with us. Oase said confidently to them. You all should be focusing more on yourself right now. Just leave it to us heroes. Kendo said to them. Having gotten their answer, Wally, Miliana, and Sho went off to join Rob with the others while Simon stayed behind. Just take care of yourself, Urza. Simon finally said after moments of deliberating. And rangers, Simon began as turned towards the older kids, staring straight at them intensely. Make sure she stays safe, the boy asked, as his words carried an edge to them that made it clear he wouldn't forgive the rangers if anything happened to the redhead girl. Catching the hidden threat, Urza was about to reprimand Simon until Ren spoke up. I could say the same to you, kid, Ren said calmly but serious tone. Your sister Kagura is waiting for you back on our ship and is dying to see you again. So if I were you, I would focus more on that than Urza right now. He stated in a serious lecture tone, surprising Urza and Simon with how serious he was. That's right, his little sister was waiting for him. So as much as Simon was worried about Urza, he had to see his sister again. Get going, Simon. You have somewhere else more important to be right now. 
ran orders the boy. Once he got over his surprise, Simon waved them off as he ran to catch up with the others, leaving Urza and the other six Power Rangers alone in the cavern. Sorry about how they acted guys. Urza apologized on behalf of her friend. They mean well but ever since I lost my right eye they've gotten a little overprotective of me. She stated as she rubbed the back of her head bashfully. Don't worry about it. It really doesn't bother us. Takoyami said waving off her apology as they weren't bothered at all by how her friends acted towards them. They must really care about you if they're willing to act like that to protect you. That's what friends do after all. Momo acknowledged, having grown to like them already. They really do. Urza admitted softly as she went to grab her sword and shield. Everyone, I want to thank you again for accepting my selfish request. She stated as she turned to face the heroes. I know you came here originally to bring Simon back to his little sister and free all of us from this place. So I know this is really asking a lot more than you all expected so I she was about to say more only for Ren to place his hand on her shoulder. Don't worry about it Urza. Ren said with a smile. Helping others is what we rangers do best. He stated confidently surprising Urza with his words but causing her to smile at them as well. We'll lend you our strength to save Jello from the cultist, Midoriya said to her. I see, Urza said softly, glad to have some powerful allies she could rely on before remembering what she had to do. We've spent enough time here already. We have to go rescue Jello before we can actually leave this place. She stated firmly as the others nodded their head in agreement. So have any idea where your friend is anyway? The Wace asked the girl about her friend's location. Just follow me. I at least know where they've taken him. Urza stated calmly as she ran in a different direction. All right, lead the way for us, Urza. Kendo shouted before saying something. Let's follow her lead, guys. The rangers nodded in agreement before following Urza as the group quickly caught the little girl. Legacy Galleon Knight. Back on the Legacy Gallon. Kagura was in deep thought as she couldn't wait to see her older brother again real soon. After waiting on the rangers' ship for what seemed like half an hour, DCA told Kagura that her new friends found some slave children and they were teleported on the ship. Much to the young girl's surprise as she had a quick awkward introduction with them but so got along with them. Except for the sleeping boy that was laying on the couch as they warned her not to wake him up no matter what. Then a few minutes later D.E.C.A. reported to Kagura that Ren and the others found her brother, along with the other slaves after defeating an army of cultists. Much to Kagura's happiness as they found Simon and Serrano, Eric, Sawyer, and Richard surprised as the rangers beat a army of those masked bastards. With D.E.C.A.'s help, Kagura was finally about to speak with her brother again in a heartfelt reunion. They promised that would see each other again real soon. Just a little longer and I'll see you again in person, Simon. Kagura thought in anticipation as she was looking forward to seeing her brother again. Tower of Heaven Night Meanwhile, deep within the tower, Ren, Awase, Kendo, Takoyami, Momo, Midoriya, and Urza were running through a large, stone passageway as they fought off waves of cultists left and right. There's no end to these fiends, Takoyami shouted as he shot three cultists down with his legacy gun before dodging a sneak attack from behind then counters with a spinning slash from his sword that takes out a magical soldier. Even though we took out a number of them earlier, there's still more, Midoriya stated while holding back a large pink-eyed monster from biting with his legacy spear between the beast's mouth. Then Midoriya falls backward on the ground to pull the monster on top of himself, to drive a powerful kick to the beast's stomach with 5% of his quirk's power that kills it, before rolling backward back on his feet, and then charging at another foe. Just how many cultists are in this stupid tower anyway? Kendo complained while cutting down two magical soldiers then enlarged her left hand to do a side karate chop that sent six enemies flying into a wall and knocked them out. Ren, Awais, and Momo were standing together shooting down multiple enemies from a distance before moving out of the way from a magical lighting spell from a cultist. Then Ren pointed his gun at the cultist and shot his right leg making him cry out in pain, but was immediately knocked out by Momo and Awais as they slashed him down at the same time. TCH, annoying bastards, Ren muttered before shooting a pink-eyed monster that jumped at him from the side. Urza blocked a sword swing from a cultist with her makeshift shield before pushing the cultist back and cutting him across the chest with her sword. That just means we're getting closer to Jowl. Urza replied as she saw the other hero force rangers taking down the last remaining cultists with ease. I've been wondering this but how are you able to change into those costumes? She asked curiously as they continued to run. We use those devices called morphers in order to change into different ranger outfits that give us powers. Midoriya answered simply as the group continued to run through the passageway only to reach the end of it and find themselves looking over a large open cavern. They all looked down and saw that the cavern was the site of a previous battle Urza had led earlier in the morning. 
Morphers, does that mean you use magic items? Urza asked as she looked around the cliff trying to see if they didn't just run into a dead end. Hey, there's a platform we can use to reach the other side. Momo pointed out to a massive platform that bridged both sides of the cavern and was on a lower level from the cliff the group had found themselves at. It's not magic nor are we using magic items, Urza. Ren corrected her as he looked for the massive platform that Momo mentioned. Although we do have one form that does have magic. Wait, what do you mean you don't use magic or magic items? Urza asked in a confused tone as the other rangers saw the platform that Momo pointed towards. Everyone, let's use our grappling hooks, Momo suggested as she and the others took out their grappling hooks. The rangers swing their grappling hooks around a few times before throwing it forward on the other side of the cliff to attach on a pathway side rails underneath the platform. Some of us do know how to use magic. Ren replied simply as he and the others managed to hook onto some rails from up above on the other side of the cliff. What we've been using this entire time wasn't magic, but a different power that only we power rangers can access. He explained as he motioned for Urza to grab a hold of him as she complied with the redhead in his left arm. What's his power your T? Urza's question was interrupted when Ren and the others jumped off the cliff edge, swinging down below to the platform. She screamed as she was holding on to Ren with them moving across the gap and landed perfectly onto the massive platform without issue. Urza panted heavily trying to calm her racing heart as Ren placed her back on the ground. You good there, Urza? Kendo asked in concern as she was screaming during the whole thing. Why yes, I'm fine, Urza said slowly regaining her composure. Are you sure we can take a break if you want? Midoriya asked in concern for the little girl's health. Don't worry about it, I'm okay now. Urza said not wanting them to worry too much about her. Let's just continue. She began to run forward on the platform with rangers following her from behind. How much more closer until we've reached Jell? Oase asked as Urza before noticing something at the corner of his sight. He should be up a Urza was about to say when Takoyami introduced her. Dark Shadow Takoyami suddenly made Dark Shadow appear from his stomach in front of everyone to knock aside a magic blast aimed for Urza's head straight into the air. Further down the massive platform, the rangers and Urza could see multiple cultists armed with swords and magic staffs as well as several magic soldiers and a large flying worm beast hovering in the air above them. We're not alone, Urza shouted as she brandished her sword and shield. If they want to fight, then they've got one all right. Oase declared while he cracked his knuckles with a grin on his face before pressing a button on the top of his belt buckles to summon a ranger key, grabbing it with his right hand. Guys let's try this ranger form next. He suggests showing his key to the others. Not a bad chance, Oase. Let's do it. Ren liked the idea along with the others, as they then passed the buttons on their own belt buckles to summon a ranger keys of the team Oase suggested, except for the silver ranger. We'll handle the enemies on the ground. Midoriya take out the one in the air. He said to them, Right? Urza and the others said in agreement. Then the pirate legacy rangers opened up their mobilates with their left hands. Legendary ranger mode, turbo. They all shouted together while holding up their Turbo Ranger keys before flicking them open. Shift into Turbo. They then inserted the keys into their morphers before moving them forward, as the Turbo Ranger logo appeared in front of each of them before consuming the rangers to change them into new suits. Ren was the red Turbo Ranger, Oase was the blue Turbo Ranger, Kendo was the yellow Turbo Ranger, Takoyami was the green Turbo Ranger, and Momo was the pink Turbo Ranger. Urza was once again amazed by their new transformation but didn't let it distract her from the battle. Let's go, Ren shouted as he, Oase, Kendo, Takoyami, and Momo raced towards their enemies head on at super high speed thanks to their turbo powers, while Midoriya jumped high into the air towards the large flying pink beast. Legacy Spear, Gun Mode Midoriya shouted while turning his spear into a gun. Urza rushed forward like them to face more of the cultists, but stopped in her tracks with a surprised expression on her face when she witnessed their newfound speed. The five rangers were moving around at super speed while taking out all the cultists, wizards, and magic soldiers in the last then three seconds with super fast punches and kicks. Meanwhile, with that happening, Midoriya was moving forward at the flying beast in midair and started firing multiple laser shots at the monster damaging the creature with it howling in pain and briefly stopping its movements. Seeing this Midoriya quickly activities one for all at 15%, then spun around multiple to build up his momentum before delivering a devastating left kick at the large pink flying monster's stomach that created a powerful shockwave, sending it rocketing back fast into a rocky wall that destroyed it upon impact and caused the area to shake violently with the beast laying dead underneath multiple rocks. Urza just stood there wide-eyed in astonishment at the display of power in front of her. 
She had already seen them in action before, but seeing more of what they could do was still mind-blowing for Urza to see. The five rangers on the ground took out all the enemy forces at an instant speed that made them look like colorful blurs. Urza wasn't even able to keep track of their movements as they were blurs in her eyes and the cultists, wizards, and magic soldiers didn't even have time to react before being taken out in only seconds. Midoriya was about to kill that large monster with the most powerful kick the little girl had ever seen in her life. They're amazing, Urza said in complete amazement at the hero force ranger's power. Can I ever be as strong as them? She wondered if she could be that strong in the future. Crap there's more of them. The way shouted which got Urza out of her thoughts as they another wave of enemies coming at them. No time to get distracted. Urza said to herself before running at the enemy with a mighty battle cry. I won't fall behind. As the magic soldiers charged up their attacks, the rangers regrouped with each other and pulled out their own weapons to counter the enemy's attack. Turbo Lightning Sword Ren shouted while holding his sword with both hands. Turbo hand blasters. Away shouted while posing with his weapons. Turbo star chargers. Kendo shouted while posing with her weapons. Turbo thunder cannon. Takoyami shouted while pointing his weapon forward. Turbo wind fire. Momo shouted while pointing her bow forward before pulling back the sting. Legacy spear. Gun mode. Midoriya shouted while pointing his gun forward with both hands holding onto it. As the magic soldiers fired their magic blasts, the rangers made a counter-strike. Fire, Ren shouted as the rangers' weapons released laser blasts out of them, colliding against the incoming magic blasts, as they cancelled each other out with small explosions. But some of the rangers' laser blasts managed to get past the barrage of laser fire, as a few of the magic soldiers were shot directly on their chests and heads, engulfing them in small explosions and knocking them out of the air. Six cultists decided to charge at the heroes with their swords drawn in a brave attempt to kill them. The rangers weren't worried in the slightest as they were about to retaliate until Urza immediately jumped in front of them and blocked all their swords with her own. Not bad, Urza. Momo complimented the girl as Urza couldn't help but grow a smile from hearing the older girl's pace. Strike them down now, Dark Shadow. Takoyami ordered as Dark Shadow emerged from his body. Here comes the festival. Dark Shadow shouted while flying over Urza head and punching at the six cultists, knocking all of them off of the platform while avoiding Urza entirely. Let me punch your ticket. Seeing that more cultists and magic soldiers were heading towards them, Kendo pulled out a ranger key and showed her teammates with the others doing the same thing as they brought out their keys. Everyone, I'm feeling a little wild right now, Kendo said in a cheeky tone with them holding out their mobilates and legacy cellular. Same here, Midoriya said back to her as they regrouped to do another mode change. Legendary Ranger Mode, Wild Force. They all shouted together while holding up their Wild Force Ranger keys before flicking them open. Wild Axis. They then inserted the keys into their morphers before moving them forward, as the Wild Force Ranger logo appeared in front of each of them before consuming the Rangers to change them into new suits. Ren was the Red Wild Force Ranger, Awase was the Blue Wild Force Ranger, Kendo was the Yellow Wild Force Ranger, Takoyami was the Black Wild Force Ranger, Momo was the White Wild Force Ranger, and Midoriya was the Silver Wild Force Ranger. Wild Force, Haya, the six Rangers quickly did a short jump into the air before landing on the ground and hitting their claw hands on the floor which created a cloud of dust, and then pose like animals before charging at the cultists. Let's go wild on these guys, Ren shouted while they rushed forward at the group of cultists. Time to fly, Kendo shouted, holding her hands up like bird claws before hitting the ground with her hands. Then she jumped up into the air, spreading her wings down from her arms, then soared off the platform and flew into the sky like a bird. Golden Eagle Sword Kendo shouted while pulling out a yellow stylized handled sword with a medium blade, soaring down towards any cultists or magic soldiers within reach, sending them flying off the massive platform in the process with a quick swing of her weapon before flying away. Ren, Momo, and Midoriya are running on all fours like animals as they charged at their enemies while dodging multiple magical attacks easily thanks to this ranger form giving them animal little reflexes. Midoriya was moving a little bit more quicker than the two other because of one for all helps. Then he took a high leap into the air before falling down over to the cultists' wizards in the back who were casting the long-range spells as he knocked out one of them with a knee strike to the head that sends the man flying back. Impossible. A cultist yelled in disbelief as he and the other wizards pointed their staffs at Midoriya to kill him with their spells. Kill this heretic. He angrily ordered as they were charging up their spells. But Midoriya didn't give them a chance to act, as he quickly moved over to the left like lightning to the cultist closest to him and delivered a crushing elbow jab to the cultist's chest that knocked him out. 
then circled over to another enemy to sweep the man off his feet with a quick low sweep before the Silver Ranger spun back around to punch the cultist in the abdomen that sends him crashing into a number of other cultists, as their spell casting was interrupted leaving just one remaining. Die you, bastard. The last cultist panics in fear as he fires a high-speed wind spell at the hero. Midoriya in response quickly draws his weapon from its holster. Lunar Q, he said and swiftly cut the wind spell in half as the air pressure flowed past him and caused an explosion behind with the cultist being in shock from his attack failing. The scared man turned around to make a break, but Midoriya suddenly appeared in front of him at a ridiculous speed to slash him down in an intense before moving on to more foes. Ran and Momo were rushing at the cultists and magical soldiers in the front like wild animals, as the magical soldiers fired more magical blasts at them but two were still evading their barrage assault with them both zooming around the floor with unpredictability. Once close, Ren spun around to sweep a cultist's leg, tripping him up onto his back before the Red Ranger continued his charge at a bunch of magical soldiers to take out. Momo suddenly leaps on top of the man hard makes the villain pass out then leaps once again into the air at two cultists, who swing their swords at the girl to kill her in midair, only for the White Ranger to use her claws to break their weapons apart along with striking them down in the process. Ren jumps over two magical soldiers to another one behind them and scratches it to death with his left claw before spinning back around to swing both his claws at one of the magical soldiers jumps over early. Then Claw uppercuts the last magical soldier, right before backflipping out the way of multi-fireball spells aimed at him from more magical soldiers, landing on all fours like a cat. Ren, give me a boost. Momo shouted while running at him before pulling out her saber. Crystal saber. She shouted before jumping at him. Ren immediately turned towards her and knew what she was planning. Then placed his hands together down below with Momo landing her feet on his hands and he tossed her over to the magical soldiers like a springboard to get at a higher position. Momo then somersaulted forward with her saber in hand as the ranger lit it up, then dug it into the ground creating a small crevice in front of her smoke shot up as the crevice opened up, hitting the magical soldiers directly, making sparks come out of their bodies that stuns them. Ren ran up next to her before summoning a new weapon, Lion Blaster, Gatling Mode. Ren shouted while pointing his weapon at the enemy before unleashing a barrage of rapid-fire lasers, hitting magical soldiers and causing them to explode. Nice. He cheered giving his second-in-command a high-five. Indeed it was, Momo said with a smile returning the high-five. Takoyami was running on all four like a bison, with a waist running right behind him at a group of pink eyeless monsters as the beasts were charging at them as well. A giant pink beast leaped forward at Takoyami like a rabid animal but jumped underneath the monster's stomach, hitting below with a strong rush charge. But Takoyami wasn't done yet as the Black Ranger grabbed onto the pink beast's body and used the momentum of the rush charge to shift himself on top of it before throwing the large creature at the other eyeless monster with amazing strength like a wrecking ball that shattered them all in a different direction. Oasis immediately jumped at three monsters coming their way in the air and used his claws to rip them to shreds before landing right next to his teammates. They both noticed the large pink beast and the other monster getting back up. They seriously don't know when to quit, Oasis said in annoyance. Oasis, let's do a combo attack. Takoyami suggests. Okay, Oasis said in agreement before pulling his weapons. Blue shark fighting fins. He crossed his arms while holding his weapons backhanded. Oasis jumped up in the air and got into a diving position. Then Takoyami grabbed him and held him on his right shoulder. Takoyami then pulled Oasis back, before throwing him forward, making him dive toward pink eyeless monsters like he was a shark swimming in the air. The Blue Ranger was swimming past multiple enemies while cutting them down with his fighting fins, as Takoyami followed his friend from behind while taking out the monsters Oasis didn't kill with his claws and the help of Dark Shadow. Oasis continues to dive towards the large pink monster before it can do anything to stop him. Surging Slice Oasis shouted while charging up his blue shark fighting fins with blue energy and cross slashes the monster, as the pink beast cried out in pain before exploding to death. Look like our work isn't done just yet. He stated as he noticed he was surrounded by more eyeless monsters. Agreed my ranger company. Takoyami came up to him from behind while punching away an enemy in the process. Let's do one more for the road guys. Dark Shadow suggested another combo attack as the monsters began to attack them again. 
You just read my thoughts, the way said with a nod before hand spring backward towards his friend, then spread his legs out as Takoyami grabbed them both and held him in place. Here goes, Takoyami yelled out as he spun around multiple times, making a way slash his fins against all the pink eyeless coming at them like a top of death that kills every single one of the creatures. Then Takoyami threw a waist above himself as he stopped himself from spinning while a waist backflipped back on the ground perfectly as the two boys stroked a cool pose over their victory. All right, the waist said pumping his fist in the air in excitement. Ravelry in the dark. Takoyami calmly spoke with a tiny smile on his face. That was so cool. Dark Shadow commented. Urza deflects a spear strike with her sword, then hits the cultist across the face with her shield before watching in amazement as the rangers take care of the enemies with issues. The red-haired girl spots Kendo flying over the platform while she swoops down like a bird, striking down cultists and magic soldiers with her sword, sending them flying off the structure in the process. One magic soldier managed to avoid Kendo's aerial assault by moving behind the yellow ranger as it began to charge its attack while the girl was circling back around. Before the floating zombie creature could fire its blast, Urza jumped towards it and uppercutted it with her sword's hilt, slamming its mouth shut in the process. With no opening for it to escape, the magic blast exploded inside the magic soldier's head and blew it apart as Urza was thrown across the platform from the blast. As Urza managed to get back onto her feet, she witnessed Midoriya punching the last cultist off the platform just in time for the flying worm beast to swoop down towards him from behind. Midoriya look out, Urza shouted in concern as she watched the flying beast open its large jaws at Midoriya. But suddenly Kendo flew down quickly to drop kick the eyeless pink beast on top of its head, closing its jaws as the monster's body was skidding on the platform with Kendo riding on top of the creature. Midoriya, who already was aware of the attack from behind quickly flipped back on the large eyeless beast with Kendo as the two rode the monster's body like a skateboard picking up dust on the massive platform. I don't know about you, but I'm so over this ride, Kendo said looking at Midoriya from the side. Me too. Let's send this thing back to where it came from, Midoriya said with a nod while looking at her. The two rangers smirked at each other as they both had the same idea, and then finished it off with a back flip kick, sending the large pink eyeless monster flying away like a cannonball, as it crashed straight into the cavern walls that breaking apart upon impact with the monster crying out in pain one last time before dying. Whoa, Urza muttered in awe as she walked up to the Hero Force Rangers, who had regrouped with each other before a belief flash of light switched them all back to their pirate forms and Midoriya stopped his quirk. So that's what you power rangers it's almost like magic. The redhead observed as she picked up a short sword dropped by a cultist earlier. The sword was still in its sheath, which had a strap that allowed it to be carried on its wielder's back. We already told you Urza this power isn't magic. Takoyami replied, as only the Mystic Force Rangers' powers are the only time they can use magic. Meanwhile, Urza slung her new weapon over her shoulder. The sword's short size suited her while making an excellent backup weapon for the girl. Come on, let's keep moving, Midoriya said as the group continues on after the battle they've just had. All right, then guys, could you at least tell me about your powers? Urza asked as the group ran down the platform towards the other side. No more enemies were left to distract them from their objective. Sorry, but no, Ren said as he surprised the redhead. We kinda have a rule in our group not to reveal any secrets about our abilities to others. He explained as best as he could to the Urza. Oh, I see. That's disappointing to hear then. Urza said sadly as she wanted to know more about their abilities. Sorry, Urza. It isn't a matter of trust, since we trust you. Kendo said until Momo spoke up in her place. It's just that we can't take the risk of telling anyone concerning how dangerous our powers are. Momo said to the girl to cheer her up. No, it's fine. I completely understand standing. Urza said shaking her head at them. Guys, stop. Oase warned everyone. Then suddenly the rangers came to a stop while Urza stopped a few feet in front of the heroes, as the pirate legacy rangers felt something nearby in the area. Something nearby. Holo Tommy thought in worry. Everyone? Why'd yo Urza asked in a concerned tone as to why they'd stopped, when something was flying at her from behind. Look out. Ren yelled as he swung his blade behind Urza to deflect a flying spinning axe in a different direction to save the red-haired girl's life. That would have hit me if Ren didn't, Urza thought, realizing how easily she would have been killed at the last minute if Ren hadn't protected her. The rangers realized that they weren't out of danger yet and acted quickly. Everyone, move. Takoyami shouted as he had dark shadow grab onto Urza, with the group jumping back to avoid being crushed by a massive figure falling on top of them. The platform shook heavily from the impact as the pirate legacy rangers tried to maintain their balance on it. 
Urza quickly looked up as her single eye widened in shock at the appearance of the duo's attacker. It's him. Urza thought in shock as she looked up towards the massive cultist's face. Memories of the torture the massive cultist put her through surged to the forefront of her mind. Giller wore a stern expression under his mask as he lifted his arm up to catch his massive axe, which had circled back around in midair like a boomerang. So this is what your so-called rebellion has been reduced to, girl, Giller said in an unimpressed tone as he looked over Urza and the rangers, not having suspected she would only come with a small group. Did everyone just abandon you to escape while you rushed in here to save your dear friend? He asked sarcastically. A sadistic grin grew on his face when he saw Urza glare hatefully at him. And now you're all alone with only this. A bunch of colorful costume weaklings. The man stated uncertainly, noticing that Ranger's outfit was completely different from any of the other slaves they'd forced into labor. But it doesn't matter now since you'll never get past M-O-O-U. He started only to suddenly squeal in pain while taking a few steps back as he was getting shot multiple times by gunfire. Urza's eyes widened as she saw the pirate legacy rangers pointing their guns at the massive cultist during his monologue. Blah, 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 I'm going to kill you, blah, blah, blah. I swear you villains just like to hear yourselves talk. Ren complained as the massive cultist could feel the sting of the gunfire while he groaned to soothe the pain. No matter what world we're in it seems that every bad guy loves to monologue. Kendo said with a heavy sigh. Yeah, right before they end up losing in the end, Awais said while shaking his head. I guess some things stay the same in other universes, Midoriya commented while rolling his eyes. True, but it does give us an advantage in a fight. Momo said giving positive advice. Too much confidence will bring a person to their downfall. Takoyami wisely said. Come on, Urza. We don't have time to waste on this idiot. Ren shouted as he pushed Urza forward by lightly hitting her on the back. Right? Urza said happily as she and the rangers advanced forward. You little bastards. Giller muttered as they were running closer to him. Do you really think I'll? He continued as he grabbed a hold of one of his axes on his back. The weapon's steel blade began to glow a rainbow of colors once he pulled it out of its handle. Let you get away with this humiliation. He roared in anger as he swung his axe vertically toward the in-group, sending a rainbow-colored slash toward them that cut up the wooden planks as they moved. Seeing the incoming attack coming at them, Midoriya quickly used one for all at 15%, and moved in front of everyone to swing his spear to the right side, as the rainbow-colored slash was immediately dispelled, making the group stop in their tracks as they got in defensive positions. What was that? Urza asked in surprise, having never seen the massive cultist use such an attack when he led the attack on her village. Guys, be careful. This one's different from the others. Midoriya warned his teammates as he felt the power behind that magical attack. I knew it was only a matter of time before we ran into someone powerful here, Momo said with narrowed eyes. Which means we can't pull our punches on him like the other cultists, Awais said readying himself for this battle. Hey, Momo, Ren whispered getting her attention. How long can you make a smoke bomb? A few seconds at best. Why? Momo asked him as she started to use her quirk to make one. For a distraction of cause. Urza. Ren replied as his eyes narrowed while watching the massive cultist getting for another attack. Go on ahead and we'll deal with this guy. He ordered making him look at him in Urza's shock. But I can't just leave you here to face him alone. Urza shouted at him. She was about to argue against his idea before Kendo said something next. Remember why you're here in the first place, Urza. To rescue Jellal, Kendo said reminding Urza of her purpose. We can take this guy, no problem. But you got somewhere more important to be. Don't lose sight of your goal. Not when you this close to it. Takoyami said to her. That's right. I only made it this far thanks to the ranger's help. I can't let their effects go to waste. Urza thought remembering her mission to her friend. Then she strengthened her resolve before giving a confident nod to the rangers to go on ahead. It's done, Momo said to everyone, making a military-style smoke grenade appear in her left hand. Okay, let's go, Ren ordered as they charged forward together at the massive cultist with a battle cry. Giller just sneered at this before he raised one of his massive battle axes, as the weapon's blade began to glow red to charge up a spell to attack the group. But everything went according to Ren's plan as this was the moment to act. Momo, now, Ren said to her. Right, Momo said throwing the smoke grenade at the massive cultist who attempted to block the grenade with the broadside of his weapon. As the smoke grenade was reaching Giller, Ren raised his legacy gun forward before shooting the smoke grenade that causes an explosion that covered the whole platform in smoke. Giller started coughing in irritation as the smoke was getting into his mouth with his massive battle axe stopped glowing red. Damn, brats. What the hell was that? Giller said still coughing until something from his left side moved right past him through the smoke cloud like a speeding bullet. 
What the? He gazed back to see before his eyes widened in surprise. It was Midoriya who was carrying Urza in his arms. With the Silver Ranger used his quirk of superior speed to move past Giller faster than he could react as they reached the end of the massive platform that was connected to the cliff's edge, where the smoke didn't reach. After getting a breath of fresh air out of the smoke cloud, Urza looked up and was surprised that they did make it across the platform. She then turned her head as she saw a large opening in the cavern wall that led to another pathway, one she was far too familiar with. I'm nearly there Jell. Just wait for me a little longer. Urza thought determinedly as Midoriya placed her back on the ground. Giller was glowing in rage at how they were about to get past him, until his battle instinct kicked to block multiple sword attacks from Ren, Awase, Momo, Kendo, and Takoyami with his massive battle axe, holding them in place as the smoke beings to clear away. Don't forget about us, pal, Oase said to him as they were holding the massive man in place. You won't get in Urza's way to see her friend again, Momo stated to him furiously. You little shits, Giller said in frustration while struggling to hold the stalemate as these kids were a lot more stronger than he originally thought, gripping his battle axe even harder to keep himself from being pushed back. When I'm done with you brats, that girl is next. That's never going to happen, Ren shouted back to him. Not while we're here to stop. Kendo said to him before pulling her left fist back. Double jumbo fist. She shouted while throwing her left fist the cultist's massive battle axe, and then activated her quirk to enlarge her left fist to make maximum impact on the man's weapon which created a powerful yellow shockwave, and a strong gust of wind sending Giller rocketing off the platform in surprise as didn't expect that to happen. Damn it. Giller yelled out while flying back in the air as he could feel the numbness in his arms from the powerful blow he just blocked, with his massive battle axe now having some cracks in it. Now fall into the depths of the abyss, Takoyami stated before summoning Dark Shadow to move above Giller, as Dark Shadow raised his hands and clasped them together before bringing his fists downward into Giller's face, as didn't have time to block it with his axe with his hands still feeling numb, shattering the man's mask as he sent the massive cultist crashing towards the ground, which creates a dust cloud that covers him. Giller ended up falling to a lower wider area that looked like a labor place where they had the slaves working above the platform. Don't think this is over yet buddy, Ren declared before jumping off the platform down below. Momo, Awase, Takoyami, and Kendo followed suit, jumping down below to the lower area. When they landed, the dust around Giller cleaned as he was lying in a smaller crater before getting back onto his feet. But he also looked very livid with rage. I'm sick of this crap. Giller stated menacingly in a fit of rage, as he rushed at the rangers with one of his axes raised high above his head as the air shimmered around the axe's blades. Shredding wave. Giller shouted as he swung downwards at an angle, causing the rangers to move out of the way by barrel rolling to the left or right sides on their knees to avoid being hit by the swing as it sent a shimmering slash flying downwards. The pirate legacy rangers watched in surprise as the shimmering wave destroyed everything in its path from the surface of the ground to multiple objects that were used for working before hit an iron walkway structure, causing it to fall apart in an intense as Urza was watching everything unfold from atop of the cliff with Midoriya there, feeling the shockwave of the attack. Before the team of heroes could even react, Giller was already in front of them and slammed his oversized fist down on Oasis' abdomen. He blocked the punch with his sword but was sent rolling back on the ground a few times before stopping in place. This made the others attack the cultists by changing in with their swords from different directions, as Awase was the last one to get back on his feet before changing in two. Giller in response swung his axe around at them, pushing both Momo and Ren back as they managed to block it in time with their swords. Kendo and Takoyami just shifted their bodies to avoid the massive weapon before stepping away to get some distance from the enemy and a waist jump up to clash blades with cultists, only to get pushed back a few meters before landing on his feet. Everyone, Urza shouted in concern for the rangers as she watched everyone from the cliff. You'll pay for that. She yelled in anger as she gripped her sword and glared at the massive cultist, as she was about to jump down there until Midoriya grabbed the girl by her shoulders to stop the redhead. No, Urza, you have to keep going. Let us take care of this villain, Midoriya tells the red-haired girl, making Urza look at him in shock. Remember, you still have to rescue Jellal, he shouted towards the girl, before rocketing down to the lower area where the others were in a flash of speed to help them fight the axe-wielding cultist. Midoriya quickly swung his spear down at Giller, who jumped from his spot to avoid the attack and landed several feet away from the rangers, as he pulled out his other axe from his back, before charging forward with his battle axes setting themselves ablaze. Oh, oh okay, Urza replied hesitantly, not happy about this request. Just come back to me and the others okay. 
We are not leaving without you guys, she shouted back at them, unsure they heard her since the heroes were pretty far down and fighting Giller. Just get going already, Urza. We can handle ourselves, Ren shouted back at her in a slightly demanding tone, before ducking under another magical attack and then returning gunfire at the enemy. Urza slightly flinched from the change in tone, then hesitated for a few seconds while still watching the battle from down below. She knew that they were strong and could handle pretty much any situation that came their way, but couldn't help but still worry for them. The girl just shook the thought in the back of her head before heading into the opening in the wall and down the pathway. Meanwhile, outside of the tower, Jiru, Yui, Rob, Simon, Wally, Sho, Miliana, and the other slaves managed to make it outside at the base of the tower, with Yui and Jiru leading the group so DCA can bring the legacy gallon to get everyone off the island. The two rangers managed to gather up all the slaves by request of their leader, as the girls were doing everything they could to protect all the slaves with them. Finally fresh air, Wally shouted as he and Sho took a deep breath, both of them glad to finally taste the fresh ocean air. It's not over yet, Simon reminded them as he pointed towards the dock. We have to get past them if we want to get to the docks, he explained as they watched the battle occur in front of them. What they saw were small groups of eyeless pink monsters and magical soldiers fighting back against the two Power Rangers, with the former slaves and workers staying back for their safety. Jiru punches the pink monster before spiraling backward in the air, to knee strike a magical soldier in the head. Everyone stay back, we can take care of the enemy. Jiru ordered while she and Yui were fighting off a horde of monsters. Yui kicks a magical soldier away then falls back to roll on the ground sideways before shifting her body back to shoot an incoming eyeless pink beast to death. Just wait a little larger. Our ship should be here soon. Yui said getting up from the ground to kick a magical soldier to the right side. Simon, Wally, Sho, and Miliana, several others went to protest and join the battle to help the girls. But Rob spoke up to keep the others in check. No, nobody's interferes. Let them handle this. Rob ordered the others in a serious tone. But Rob, we can't just let them fight alone. Wally protested in anger. Yeah, we can help. Miliana added in with her new concern. I understand how all of you are feeling. Believe me, I do. Rob spoke in a calm but authoritative tone. But those two young ladies are the strongest ones here and the only thing we'll accomplish is getting in their way. He said to his fellow slaves, before they could argue back, a large explosion that creates a gust of wind hitting them got their attention back on the battle. They watched as the two teenage girls took out more and more enemies with them falling in combat, as the former slaves looked in amazement. Soon the two rangers regrouped with one other as they stood side by side to prepare for one last push to clear the way forward to their destination. Yui presses a button on the left side of her belt for the case on her buckle to turn over, before she opens the case to reveal three Dino Chargers inside then grabs one of them after closing it. Dino Charger, ready. Yui shouted while holding up the Tricera Charger forward before clicking a button on it, activating it. Then she pops the barrel of the Morpher's mouth before inserting the Dino Charger into the muzzle of the Dino Charge Morpher. Once that was done, she pressed down the mouth on her Morpher. Tricera Charger, engaged. A voice announced from the Dino Charge Morpher, then Yui twirls the weapon in her right hand before holding it up. Energize. Yui shouted while spinning the barrel on her Morpher with her left hand before pointing it at the enemy as it was charging up pink energy. Dino Morpher Blast, final strike. She fired a powerful pink laser blast at eyeless pink beasts and magic soldiers, which turned into the pink tricer ahead while flying at the enemy. Call to the beast inside, release the wolf. Jiru shouted as she surrounded her body in dark purple energy while performing martial arts movements with the giant project of the wolf spirit appearing above her before thrusting her right hand forward. As the wolf spirit moved towards the eyeless pink monsters and magical soldiers, both attacks hit the group of enemies simultaneously as it causes an explosion that wipes out the army of monsters. The sound of combined attacks clashing with one another echoed around, destroying the ground where the monsters were standing and creating a crater around 5 meters in diameter. The shocking waves of air lasted about 5 seconds before they finally stopped, leaving the place as calm as if the clash had never happened in the first place. Every one of the slaves was shocked to see the scene that played in front of them. No one expected it. Though it wasn't really a powerful wave as everyone could still stand on their feet albeit with difficulties, they all knew this was far from the two girls' actual power. Whoa, Wally, Sho, and Miliana all said together in amazement with widened eyes. It's unbelievable just how strong they are. Even now we've had a hard time fighting these cultists. Simon said out loud in surprise. That's why I said we should let them handle this, Rob said with a smile on his face. Hey, Jiru's voice snapped them out of their shock as they looked at her. 
That should be the last of them. We need to hurry up and get to the docks before more show up. She reminded them as the group of slaves advanced forward to the docks with no enemies in sight. MMMM. Yui hummed to herself as she was deep into thought. Something wrong, Yui? Jiru asked while walking next to her friend. I just noticed that we've been fighting against monsters instead of people since we separated from the others. Yui said to her in a concerned tone. It's kind of strange why we haven't enough any cultists yet. You're right, it's starting to bug me as well, Jiru said as she watched all the slaves moving closer to the docks. Let's just keep our eyes open and protect everyone as best we can, she said to her friend. Yeah, let's do our best, Yui said with a nod before the two rangers walked along with the other slaves. After a few minutes of walking, the group of slaves and two rangers made their way to the docks they could hear the sound of waves crashing and the smell of seawater in the air. All the former slaves were beaming brightly at them, beyond ecstatic at what had happened today. It was an impossible event that could only begin to be described as a miracle, but they were about to finally regain their freedom after all this time. We're almost to the docks, Rob said to rangers while leading the group to the docks. That's good to know. We'll call our ship to pick everyone up, Jiru said before pulling up her morpher to her face. Everyone, stop. Yui shouted at the group of slaves as everyone looked at the girl. What's the matter, miss? Liliana said to the pink ranger with a worried expression. Look, Yui pointed forward as everyone looked in the distance to see where the girl was pointing, which made the group's eyes widen in shock. In the long shipping yard docks with a number of boards that the cultists used to bring in more slaves and tons of boxes and other objects, as a number of cultists' bodies were lying on the ground like someone had already taken care of them. TT the cultists, they're all, Sho was struggling to say. Dead, Simon said with a look of horror on his face. But how? No one here defeated them, Liliana said in a concerned tone. Rob just looked at the cultists' bodies and noticed that they looked pretty undamaged despite being killed. Something about all this just gives the old fairy a very bad feeling. Everyone stay back, Jiru said to everyone while running in front of the slaves with Yui next to her. Let us take a look at this. She then ran up to the shipping yard to check the situation. But, Wally was about to argue back until he was cut off. No buts, just stay back. Yui ordered in a serious tone as she ran off as well. Hey, wait. Simon yelled on for Rob to grab the boy by his arms to stop him. Old man Rob. Don't, Simon. Rob said to a child with a serious gaze. Let them handle this. Up ahead, Jiru and Yui were on their knees inspecting the bodies of the deceased cultists in the shipyard. No pulse. Yui grunted out loud in a concerned tone. Probably died not too long ago. Yeah, the same with the others, Jiru said as she turned towards her. Something about this just feels off. Each and every one of their bodies are completely uninjured. It's almost like they've died naturally, she stated. We should probably hold off on contacting DECA until we're sure that it's self to bring the ship here. Yui suggested to her while standing back up. Yeah, good call, Jiru said as she stood back up as well. As the two female rangers were about to decide what to do next, two of the deceased cultists suddenly popped back up on their feet which took the two girls and slaves by surprise. Two of the cultists are alive. A slave shouted in fear. W what the hell? How is he alive? Jiru shouted while jumping back in surprise before getting in a defensive stance with Yui doing the same. I checked his pulse and everything. Don't know, but get ready, Yui said to her as the two cultists started to attack the girls. The two men throw a punch at both of the girls but Yui and Jiru counter the attacks by blocking them and then twisting their arms to a degree. As Jiru tosses her victim a few meters away on the ground and Yui twists her victim's arms behind his back before knocking him over the head that makes the man collapse on the floor. Okay, what was that? Yui asked in confusion as she was still on guard. I don't know, Jiru said not letting her guard down. But I do know one thing for sure is that they were already dead. How is that possible? Yui asked her. Was it some kind of magic? Probably, Jiru said as she was unsure herself. I tried to make them look the best I could, but corpses are the end of stories I suppose. A third voice caught Yui, Jiru, and all the slaves' attention as they turned their heads toward it. Their eyes widened in surprise to see a horned and busty woman sitting placidly on a wooden box while reading a book with a bored expression on her face. Immediately their guards went up as they noticed the woman's presence. What the hell? We didn't even notice her presence until she said something. Jiru thought while narrowing her eyes at the woman. Who is she and where did you come from? Yui had the same thought while watching the woman carefully. Back to the slaves. They were just wondering who this mysterious lady was as they'd never seen her before and didn't look like a slave at all. Who's she? Sho asked pointing at the woman. Don't know, Wally said shrugging his shoulders. But she doesn't look like one of those masked jerks. Maybe she's here to help us, like the rangers. Liliana said out loud. 
Rob's eyes just narrowed in suspension at this newcomer, as his veteran instinct of being a wizard was screaming dangerous. Something about this woman just made his hands tremble at the sight of looking at her. She's dangerous, Rob thought in concern while a cold sweat was rolling down his neck. The two rangers were standing next to each other while watching Sayla carefully. Are you one responsible for killing those men? Yui exclaimed in a serious tone. The demon known as Sayla just calmly turned a page over at the book she was reading before speaking again. All I did was end their pitiful stories. There weren't any interesting chapters left to read and the details were aggravating at best. The woman sighed heavily, having closed the book. These fairy tales are most dull, as those humans were. Sayla sat the book down gently before standing up and looking at rangers. Your feeble kind needs a demonic twist to the end. She stated coldly which sent shivers down the two girls' spines. Hey Jiru, you noticed it too right? Yui asked in a cautious voice, not like her usual tone. Yeah, Jiru nodded to her friend. There's something dangerous about this woman, even more than the cultists. She said matching her teammate's tone, as both girls were put on edge by Sayla's presence. Which means we can't hold anything absolutely back on her. Yui said as this was the first time in her life that she was this serious. I had the exact same thought myself, Jiru said back with her own seriousness. The two girls quickly got into combat stances, ready to face off against one of the head demons of Tartaros. As they watched her closely, ready to fight the demon at another moment. On Sayla's part, the woman didn't look poised for battle in the least. Her hands folded beneath her impressive bust, she watched the two rangers coolly with a critical icy cold gaze. My name is Sayla, an Ethereus of Tartaros and one of the Nine Demon Gates. Sayla introduced her in a professional tone. An Ethereus of Tartaros. Jiru and Yui both thought in confusion as they didn't understand what she was saying. I can tell that you two are completely different from the humans behind you. Sayla spoke again but this time with curiosity. Your name, humans. That order given in cold blood had both rangers narrowing their eyes at the woman, as a moment of silence passed before they spoke. Kayoka Jiru. Jiru said which made Sayla's eyes widen in surprise from hearing the human's name. Did you just say your name is Kayoka? Sayla asked in a taken back tone. Yeah, got a problem with that. Jiru asked in a hostile voice. Sayla only slightly shook her head as she regained her composure. Not at all. You just had the same name as my mistress. She said as Jiru just raised an eyebrow in confusion. And what is your name, other human? Yui Kodai, and we're members of the Power Rangers Hero Force. Yui informed the demon woman. The horned woman tilted her head. Power Rangers Hero Force. Sayla closed her eyes in disappointment after hearing the word hero. So you're heroes then. Heroes have no place in a story of demons. She stated before opening her eyes to watch the two rangers with cold disdain. Your punishment for your transgression will be neither short nor light, humans. Frigid cruelty gleamed in her eyes. Why do you keep calling us humans, lady? It's almost makes it sound like you're not human yourself. Jiru asked her. That's because I'm not human. Sailor revealed which took the two girls by surprise. You're not human. Yui said slowly in shock before asking something else. If you're not human, then what are you exactly? I'm a demon from the Book of Zareph. Sailor said causally which surprised the two girls even more. She's one of the Book of Zareph's demons. Yui and Jiru both thought together in utter shock as they never imagined running in with one of Zareph's demons. Rob who heard this heart just dropped, as his face had a look of horror on it after listening to this conversation. He heard stories of the books of Zareph and demons before but never imagined that he would see one up close and in person as this could be the worst thing to ever happen to him and his fellow slaves right now when they were so close to freedom. Everyone, we need to fall back to a safer distance. Rob shouted to the others in a slightly panicked tone as he was doing his best to keep his cool. Old man Rob, what do me Simon was going to ask but was cut off. Just do as I say Rob shouted out making the other slaves jump back in surprise as they'd never seen him act like this before. Please everyone, just trust me on this one. No one said everything as they just looked at Rob in concern, as all the slaves had never seen him this freak out before, until one by one each of the slaves did as the old man said and moved back in a safer direction, away from the docks. Rob took one last good last at the docks where the rangers are, before saying something. Good luck, Power Rangers. You're going to need it against this next enemy you're facing. The old fairy said before walking away and leaving the two rangers to deal with that monster. What is one of Zareph's demons doing out here in the middle of nowhere? Jiru asked the demon lady. Even if I told you, it wouldn't change a thing, Sayla said to them while giving the girls another cold gaze. Besides, my mistress gave me very specific orders to make sure that none of you humans leave this island. Her words cut the air like a blade, and then all the dead cultists' bodies in the shipping yard suddenly began to rise from the ground. 
weapons in hand, pointing at the rangers which made Yui and Jiru look in surprise at all the dead bodies raising around them. So try not to resist, and I won't have to kill you both, she said coldly while looking at the humans in an emotionless manner. So alright folks that's all for today. Stay tuned for part 10. Do subscribe, like and share for more such videos. Press the bell icon to be notified first on release. See you in the next video till then goodbye.